We know what it takes to achieve a dream. Dedication, courage, determination, control, desire. And our goal is to channel that energy. To champion the nation's best aquatic athletes, support the teams who support them, inspire anyone and everyone to feel the benefits of a love of water and propel each sport onwards and upwards, or even downwards, by doing it the right way, sustainably, with integrity, with purpose. Because the thrill of seeing Great Britain being great at aquatic sport is something everyone can get excited about. We are Aquatics GB. Now, good morning and welcome to day one of the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships here in beautiful London's Aquatic Centre. My name's John Mason. I'm going to be guiding you through all the action this week. And I tell you what, it is going to be an amazing one. By the end of the next six days, not only are we going to be crowning our British champions, we are, of course, going to be selecting our teams to both the Paralympics and the Olympics in Paris over the summer. The best in Great Britain battling it out for a place on those teams. And I tell you what, it's going to be an exciting one. I'm looking forward to it. And it all starts right here, heats day one. So let's take a look at the schedule. What have you got to look forward to this morning? We are, of course, starting with our women's 50 meter butterfly. That is a para multi-class event. We then move into the men's 400 meters freestyle events, the women's 200 meter butterfly, the men's 100 meter 50, 150 meter IM para multi-class event, sorry, the women's 200 meter freestyle events. And then we finish, of course, with the men's 100 meter breaststroke event. It is the heat session, so they're going to be making it through to tonight's finals. How do those formats look? Well, the Paris final is going to be the top eight from the heats from across Great Britain. You can only qualify onto the Olympics team if you final into that event. We then move into the B finals. We have those uh, athletes ranked 9th to 16th from the heats. The junior finals are the next eighth fastest juniors born uh, in 2006 to 2010. And of course, the Paris para finals. This is the top eight from the heats for Great Britain. Now that one is gonna be ranked on points. So for those at home who have maybe never seen a para event, do not stress, we are here to guide you through that. How does it work? It is based on classifications. So let's take a look at that one. The classifications for para swimming are as follows. For S1 to S10, these are physical impairments. So you're gonna see these, uh, these classifications next to them on the start list. S1 with the more severe impairments, S10 with the least. S11 to S13 are visual impairments. Of course, S11 being the most severe, they must wear blackout goggles. And these, of course, will be checked at the side of the pool before and after each race. Uh, and uh, S14 is our intellectual impairments, such as pattern recognition, sequencing, memory, things like that. Uh, these athletes, of course, affected by uh, the ability to count stroke rates, the ability to count uh, patterns in the pool, etc., etc. We are starting our event today with uh, that women's 50 meter butterfly uh, multi-classification event. Para points, this is how it works, okay? The top eight from the final is based on points. We're looking at two things. The top eight in points are gonna be uh, qualifying into tonight's final to be crowned British champion. But for those para athletes to qualify onto the Paralympic events, it's gonna be based on time. So our selectors are gonna be looking at two different th things across those events. So hopefully that has made it a little bit clearer for you, but do not fret. We have the wonderful Paul Noble talking us through those races and joining me for tonight's finals are of course gonna be Molly Renshaw and Ellie Simmons. Uh, but I'm going to be handing it off now to a man you're going to be hearing a lot from over in commentary. Uh, it is the incredible Andy Jamieson. So over to Andy. Thank you, John. Really looking forward to this. Six days of this meet. It's going to be absolutely hopping. It really is. The new branding for Aquatics GB has uh, really stirred up the crowd. It's going to be an awful lot of people. It's a couple of nights actually sold out. Really looking forward to that. So as I said, six day meets, all the able-bodied and the para swim team going to be selected for Paris later on in this uh, summer. And delighted to be joined in the commentary box and he'll be covering all of those Paralympic races. Paul Noble, five times Paralympian, four times Paralympic gold medalist, 15 Paralympic medals. Where, where'd you put them? <laughs> you built me up, Andy. <laughs> Thanks for the intro, can't top that. Well. 
As you said, Andy, it's qualification times there to be achieved for the para-athletes, and we start off with a multi-classification event. It is the women's 50 metres butterfly. Just two swimmers taking the start for this one. And there we have them, Grace Harvey representing Hoddesdon and Iona Winifrith representing Tombridge. There's the classifications, S6 for Grace Harvey, S7 for Iona Winifrith. So as we saw in the graphic earlier, S1 to 10, those are physical impairments, with S1 being the most severe and S10 being the least impaired. So these two swimmers right in the middle of that classification system. Grace Harvey has a lower limb impairment. And Iona Winifrith, just 13 years of age with that yellow cap. She has a form of dwarfism as well. One of our idols was Ellie Simmons, so hopefully she'll get a chance to meet Ellie at these trials as we go through the week. So Grace Harvey can get assisted onto the blocks. <coughs> All those uh, adapted starts have to be approved by the referees, of course. So one length of the pool for Grace Harvey and Iona Winifrith, the very first event of these championships here in the London Aquatic Centre. So the two swimmers, as was said, the times will be compared against the world records for their particular classifications, and that will generate a points total. So it'll be a good example here from this very first race. Grace Harvey off to a good start. But now being pegged back by the youngster, the 13-year-old Iona Winifrith in the yellow cap. Both these swimmers very strong breaststrokers who will have chances of achieving those nomination times later on in the week. It's going to be a very close race here to start us off with. Grace Harvey, maybe just for those long arms, will get to the wall first. And 38-98, both the swimmers under the 40-second mark. That's a great start here. The points you see on the left side of that graphic there, 696 points. So 1,000 points equivalent to a world record swim for the classification for Grace Harvey, the S6. So 696, that's getting on to quite a good standard to start us off with. The youngster, Iona Winifred, what a star we've got in the making here. Result of that very first heat, 50 metres butterfly multi-classification. Top points earner, Grace Harvey, 696. And Iona Winifred is 5.76. So two excellent times there to start us off with, Andy. Good way to start the competition. Indeed, Paul. Cracking uh, starts and both through to the finals this evening. And as I said, the, uh, the crowd's actually sold out here uh, for many of the finals. Not this evening. Um, I think it's sold out Thursday, Friday, Saturday at the moment. But uh, Tuesday night, certainly Wednesday night, there's uh, plenty of tickets still available. So come on down and support the swimmers. It's going to be really fun. Fantastic meet. This morning we've got uh, four able-bodied races. First up would be the men's 400 metres freestyle. And the consideration time for the Olympics, very fast indeed for the, uh, these able-bodied swimmers. It really is a tough one. In fact, it's faster than any of the swimmers have gone so far. It'll take a new lifetime best to qualify, but uh, I do remember four years ago, or well, actually it was three years ago, and I wasn't it at the Olympic trials. Kieran Bird, fastest seed, swam an absolutely phenomenal final in the trial. He went 3:46.00 and qualified for the Olympic team. It was something special, it really was. But he's going to have to do something similar again here. The qualification time 3:45.4. So he's got to do a 0.57 lifetime best to qualify. He's in heat seven. There are seven heats in this first event. And we've got the women's 200 fly where we have our world champion. Women's 200 free, we've got another women's world champion. And then of course, men's 100 breaststroke PT. What a morning. The first morning of the Aquatics GB swimming championships for 2024. It is the Olympic trials for Paris later on this summer. It's also a selection meet for, of course, the Paris as we've just seen. And then it's also a selection meet for the European Junior Championships, which are going to be held in the first week of July in Vilnius in Lithuania. So this first heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle, fastest seed is in lane number four, Jacob Lee of Leicester Sharks. Jacob going off well at the top of your screen 
is lane zero. We're using 10 lanes for the heats and eight lanes for the final. Never quite understood why World Swimming, if there's a 10 lane port, never quite understood why we'd only have eight lanes in the final if there's actually 10 lanes there, but we're allowed to use full 10 lanes in the heats. First over in lane number five at the 100 meters turn is Brody Gordon Gibson of Edinburgh University. His lifetime best 407.5. He split 56.8 at the 100, so he's gone off well. Lovely long rangey stroke. Look at that. Powerful lad, but really stretching out beautifully at the top of every stroke. Pacing, of course, so important. And this whole field only split by 1.3 seconds on seed time, so it'll be interesting to see how close they do end up. Lane five, we breathe right off the wall there. In lane five, that's Brody Gordon Gibson still leading. One lane up from him in lane four is uh, Jacob Lee of Leicester Sharks. The juniors who can qualify for the European Junior Championships, they've got to be born in the years 2006, 7, 8, 9 or 10 donating juniors and in this uh, this event in lanes one two four all juniors in the halfway mark in this first heat the men's 400 meters freestyle first to turn is Brody Gordon Gibson in lane number five 157 six well if he can keep this going he's going to be way under his seat time his seat time 407 is his lifetime best his season's best is 407 and he's just split 157 to his feet at the halfway well, that's very good. Always interesting in the first heat of any major meet. Everyone will be watching, see how swimmers go. And if he can get close to four minutes, I mean, it's, that's a bit fantastic swim. He's just gone just over 30 seconds for that last 50. So he's going to have to come back, probably splitting about 30.5s, 30.6s will get him close to that four minutes mark. It's asking a lot. Certainly is with a 4.07 entry time. But Brody Gordon Gibson of Edinburgh University. 100 metres to go in this first heat. What, two, 58.9. He can certainly do it. He can certainly do it off that when he's just got a 61. He's got to go another 61 seconds. If he can go 61 flat on this last 100 metres, he's going to go sub four. That would be a wonderful swim. He's going to his legs as well. Second at the moment. It looks like it is down in lane number seven. Maxwell Adams of Wickham District. And the green hat closer to us. And then up in lane five, uh, in four, I should say, it's uh, Jacob Lee of Leicester Sharks. But, well, he's still under it, look. 329.87. So if he can come back in 30 flat, he's going to go sub four minutes. That'll be a seven second lifetime best. Come on, Brody. What a swim this will be if he can do it. He's gone to his legs. He's still trying. He's getting tired, though, isn't he? Look at this. Come on, Brody. See if he can go close to... Well, see if he can go under four minutes. What a swim that would be. He's tying up a little bit. Come on, Brody. 57, 58, 59. Oh, he's just outside, is he? Oh, four minutes, 0.63. Well, you can't get upset about that. A seven-second lifetime best to win the first heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle. Brody Gordon Gibson of Edinburgh University. What a swim, that was utterly brilliant. Wow. So 4, four minutes point six wins it. The 19-year-old from Edinburgh University. Second was, let me see, second was uh, Maxwell Adams, 405.58. Wow, what a start. Impressive, Paul. It was, yeah, Brody Gordon Gibson. He certainly took that out. That's what you've got to do in the 400 sometimes, isn't it? Gave himself a real chance of breaking that four minutes. And uh, what was that you said? Seven second PB? Excellent. A full heat, heat two of seven heats of this men's 400 metres freestyle. The fastest seed is Henry Baker of University of Stirling. He goes in lane number four. Four juniors in this event in lanes three, six, seven and nine closest to us in that yellow hat. That is uh, Gabriel Shepherd of City of Leeds. 
first to turn. It looks like maybe uh, it is Shep in lane nine closest to us. Well, he's ninth seed of these ten swimmers in this first heat, you know, second heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle, and he has a seeded time of 4:07 as well. Well, that first heat when uh, Brody Gordon Gibson four minutes 0.6 very nearly went under under the four minute barrier wow what a great swim that was so heat two of seven first to turn at the 100 meters it still looks like right at the bottom here Gabriel Shepherd of Leeds Shepherd of Leeds lovely low bre bre breathing uh, position look he doesn't turn his head really very much at all uses very little energy Second at the moment, it looks like Lucas Staines of Swansea University in lane eight. One lane up from him in that green hat. The rest of the field just maybe starting to come back a little bit up there in lane number four. Of course, zero at the top, so the fifth swimmer from the top is lane four. So, coming into the halfway turn in this second heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle, still leading is Gabriel Shepherd of Leeds in the yellow hat, but uh, they're just starting to build up in the centre. The black hat in four is Henry Baker. In eight, the green hat of the Swansea University's Lucas Staines. But at the halfway mark, well, it was uh, 157 in the first heat, 159-2 for Gabriel Shepherd of Leeds. Shepherd leading, second is Henry Baker, and the rest of the field just starting to come back now but uh, another good start interesting uh, tactics on the first uh, 200 meters of the 400 certainly in in the first heat port went out very quickly 157 this one a little bit more measured than 159 at the turn yeah it was a, a great first heat from Brody Gordon Gibson a good first heat as well from Gabriel Shepard the youngest man in the field I think and he's gone out really well born in 2008 so some good prospects here for these young swimmers in this first heat. They are trying to come back. The angle may be a little bit deceiving here as they come down to the 300 mark. They're gonna go with 100 to go. And it could be the swimmers in the center just beginning to come back. Henry Baker, I think, just challenging Shepherd to go into this last 100, Andy. Indeed it is, but just over first still as Gabriel Shepherd in lane nine closer to us, the city of Leeds swimmer. And he's done very well. Ninth fastest seed of this uh, 10 swimmer field in the second heat of the men's 400 freestyle. And he's led from the start. Having a go at him though now in the centre is Henry Baker of University of Stirling. And also coming back in lane five is James Froggart of City of Birmingham. So with 50 metres to go, it's still a leader. Well, what a swim this is. Can he win it from the outside in lane nine? Gabriel Shepherd of City of Leeds leading. From right in the centre there, Henry Baker in four and five coming through quickly now in the white hat of City of Birmingham is James Froggart. Froggart really having a very quick last hundred as he left it a little bit late here. He's, he looks very good indeed. Still going well though with Shepard. It looks like Shepard may take this. Shepard it is going to win the second heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle. The time I expect it to be a little bit slower. Not that much though. Look at that. Well... His seat time was 4.07.41. He's just gone 4.01. 4.07.4. He's gone 4.01. Some huge PBs from many of these swimmers. 4.01.78 was second. That's a four second lifetime best. Goodness me. Yeah, three great swims at the front there. James Froggett came in through for second. And there's a result, Gabriel Shepard. Confirmed in first place there, 15 100s ahead of James Froggart, with Henry Baker in third, Cameron Rapson as well, another good time. Top four swimmers, Andy, excellent times there. Well, it's really very impressive, and coming to a meet like this, it's, you know, it's pretty, it is pretty obvious, but <laughs> you come here, you deliver your best self in the arena, it's not that easy, it really isn't, the, uh, the nerves are quite special coming into something like this in Aquatics GB has done a super job of putting this meet on this Aquatics GB Swimming Championships for 2024. Of course, it is a national championship. It's also Olympic trial. It's also European junior trial. 
And they do say that only 20% of swimmers do lifetime best at the major championships. Only 20%, which is quite a small fraction. It always surprises me that's a little bit. It really does, but it does mean that if you can stand up on the blocks and deliver your best self, do your lifetime best, don't worry about everybody else. If you can just do your lifetime best when it matters, you really give yourself a cracking chance of doing something special. Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, you kind of sort out the, the men from the boys, if you like. You get the, the top performers who can perform on the day. And this is certainly one of the days or one of these weeks that you have to put in your performances. These Olympic places up for grabs, the Paralympic places up for grabs. Well, it is all to play for this week. And we've seen a couple of the young swimmers step up in these first couple of heats. And in the para event as well, as we started off with Grace Harvey and Iona Winifred, that could be very close to lifetime best for them. So, seen some great performances, and well, this one is close in the early stages, Andy. It's almost in a diagonal line across the pool. It certainly is. I'll give you the full lineup. It's uh, Defains of uh, Jersey Tigers in lane zero, right at the top of that shot. Then in the one, it's Booth of Rotherham, two Llewellyn Porter of Camden Swiss Cottage, three is Thomas Sansom of Loughborough University. Koresh Kodoga of a City of Leeds in lane four. And five is Denholm of uh, Newcastle. Six is Barber of Sheffield. Baker of West Suffolk in seven. Tucker of Loughborough University in eight. And uh, Blanket of uh, Blackett, excuse me, of uh, Newcastle in lane nine, closer to us. But at the moment it is Tucker of Loughborough University in the black hat, close to us here in lane number eight possibly leading it's pretty close also going well up there in lane number four Kodaka of City of Leeds Chorus Kodaka the junior lifetime best of 404.5 set uh, that this year and he looks very good indeed he's gone out well that was the uh, the halfway turn the 200 meters turn and this heat three of seven just the last two heats seeded so the top 16 swimmers will be going in those last two heats and they get faster as each heat progresses until you get to those seeded heats and right in the center there what he really does look good Kodaka of City of Leeds he well his birthday is uh, he's 16 years of age at the moment his, seven, uh, his 17th birthday coming up on the 18th of April but looking good uh, coming into the 300 meters turn here yeah, he's probably seen his teammate a little bit earlier on in that previous heat, Gabriel Shepard. Go there, so he doesn't want to be outdone. They are pretty close, he said, in age, only a few months between them. But Tucker is now taking up the running as they go over at, at uh, 300 mark. Kadak is still going well. Two swimmers under the uh, three minute mark, though, Andy. Are we going to get our first swimmer under the four? Well, it would be great to see, wouldn't it? It really would. Let's see at this turn. They need to give themselves, uh, well, 30 flat would be uh, would be great if they can do it. Let's just see what the split is with 50 meters to go. Right in the center, still going well. Kodaka of City of Leeds. Well, he's got to come back in under 30 seconds. He's got to come back in under 29.8 if he's going to do it, but he certainly can do that because he looks good in the center. Also come uh, down here in lane number eight in the black hat. Sam Tucker of Loughborough University looking good as well. So these two guys pushing each other, getting a little bit tired down this last 15 metres or so. But uh, Korosh Kodaka of City of Leeds, can he go sub four minutes? Can we see our first sub four minute swim? Oh, four minutes, point four three. Well, the times are amazing. His seat time, 4.04. 4.04.5 and he's just gone four minutes, point four. Another four second lifetime best to win Heat three of seven of the men's 400 metres freestyle. Second, Sam Tucker. Well, he went four minutes, 0 0.80. And his lifetime best, 4.02. Seeded at 4.05, his lifetime, oh, his best uh, time this season. So another two second lifetime best for him. Some cracking swimming in these early heats, it really is. There's confirmation of the result then. Kodaka wins it for City of Leeds. Tucker second, Baker third. Fourth was Porter. Really stunning swimming that was. Let me see. I think the t certainly the top four finishes new lifetime bests. Brilliant from them. So that's the third heat. 
Here we go, heat four of seven of this men's 400 metres freestyle. And in lane four, Isaac Dodds of University of Bath, the fastest seed. Five juniors in this heat. The junior time they're looking for for consideration for European juniors, 3.56. It's a big ask, 3.56, for uh, some of these guys. They do get quicker, but there, there's plenty of opportunities to swim again in the evenings here. Uh, for the able-bodied swimmers, there's a, there's a B final, there's an A final, of course, the big championship final. There's also, also a junior final as well. And they will be uh, put into those finals in order of speed. So they'll fill up the A final first, purely on speed. So you can have juniors in there as well. And then fastest eight, and then ranked nine through 16 will be in the B final and then of the remaining juniors they will go in the junior final so we're going to have what is that 24 of the top swimmers in the country coming back again in the evening and practicing that uh, arena skills in the final gone out very quickly up there in lane number three is Hayden Annan of Royal Tunbridge Wells Monson the black cat and also going very well is uh, Jonathan Turk down here in lane number nine of Mount Kelly and then first to turn 55-6, that's quick out, it really is. Turk looking good from uh, Mount Kelly, down here at the bottom of the shot in that white hat. Very quick down that first uh, 130 metres or so, Paul. I wonder if he's gone a little bit too quick here. It's going to be interesting to see how he swims the second half of the race. He certainly is, you can see him just clear water between him and the rest of the field here as he goes through. That 150 mark, 126, Turk is going well. Down closest to us as well. Well, it's the fastest we've seen, certainly at this stage. We'll see if anyone can dip under that four minute mark. Again, the entry time's here, Andy, 4.03 down to 4.04. So not much in it at all between all the swimmers right across the pool. But really, excellent start here from the swimmer at the top of those two yellow mark lanes in lane number three. And, well, still clear water between him and the rest of the field. He's really gone for this, Hayden Annan. But his lifetime best is 4.03.3. He's, uh, he's just split a 31.2. So he's got four lengths left. So he needs to uh, just pick up the pace a little bit if he's going to get under the four-minute mark. We've seen so many swimmers so far on four minutes point. I think we've had three of them already. And the fastest seed time so far is 4.03. Still, even in this heat, it's 4.03. So this is a pretty special swim. That last split there for lane number three, Hayden Annan, was uh, another 31.4. So he's now just 1.4 seconds under that, uh, the splits that he needs to do to go four minutes. He's starting to get a little bit tired, breathing a little bit higher now, coming back. A little bit at him in lane number six is Jude Lydiard of Edinburgh University. And quite a few swimmers having a go at him now. Also going up there in lane number two is James Shevchenko of Royal Wolverhampton School. 100 metres to go in this heat four of seven of the men's 400 metres freestyle. And still leading is Hayden Annan of Royal Tunbridge Wells Monson up there in uh, lane number three with Shevchenko. One lane up from him starting to catch him a little bit i think it'll be interesting to see how this goes let's see if he can split somewhere close to the 330 here oh he's getting very tired he really is 332 something like that 3 to 32.0 and lydiard in six uh, starting to come back now jude lydiard of edinburgh university so in six it's lydiard still holding on though it's anand coming back very quickly up there in two is shevchenko the higher of those two swimmers really finishing fast Shevchenko having a go but still holding on is Hayden Annan of T Royal Tunbridge Wells. What a finish. This is going to be head down inside the last five. Who gets the touch? It is Shevchenko and he gets it by, oh, what, 17 one hundredths of a second. Came back sub 30, did 29.92. A great final 50 there from James Shevchenko. Well, in the end, uh, poor. I think that's uh, early speed, maybe really hurt him a little bit but it's a still a very good swim it was still an excellent swim. what a contest at the end between the the two at the front there Shevchenko 
and Anan. It was very tight there. Shevchenko just taking that one. 17 one hundredths of a second in the end. And it was that early pace. As you said, Andy, you really felt it in the second half there, Hayden Anan. And Jude Lidiard with a good swim as well. 4.03.10. So I think top three certainly inside the entry times as well. Isaac Dodds just outside his as well. So been really treated to some great swims early on here. First four heats of these 400, I think every one we've seen improvements. And here's heat number five. What's in store now? Well, if we see improvements here, we will see sub four minutes because there's a bunch of guys seeded on four minutes and four minutes one. Fastest seed, Evan Davidson of Perth City in lane number four with Oliver Rowe of Mount Kelly in five. The Repton athlete in three. Shafi. Some great school uh, programs represented here, they really are. So those uh, fantastic high school programs that we've now got in Great Britain. Right at the top there in lane zero is uh, Sam Lander of Mount Kelly down there in Tavistock. And one is uh, Ewan Wilson of Sheffield. Raymond of Plymouth, Leander in two. Then Shafi of Repton School in three. Four is Davidson of Perth City and five it's uh, Oliver Rowe again of Mount Kelly, the second Mount Kelly swimmer, the faster seed of the two. He's in five and six it's Travis of University of Aberdeen. Seven Drysdale of Royal Wolverhampton School, another great school. And eight of course the great Millfield School, Solomon Williams and in nine closest to us is Visda of uh, City of Sheffield. And Visda in the red hat of Sheffield gone off well. He has gone off well. Ruben Vizda. Let's see, 56 points, somewhere like that, maybe at the first turn. 56-5, yes, indeed. So he's gone off well. He looks pretty comfortable at the moment. He is, uh, he's is—he's got a lovely surfing style. He really uh, gets great extension and great press on that left arm as he's driving through the water here on this first 150 metres. Breathing's to his right, away from the rest of the field. The rest of the field just starting to settle in a little bit. One lane up from the leader in nine, lane nine is the Millfield School swimmer, Solomon Williams in lane eight. So leading Vista of City of Sheffield. 4.02.7 is his entry time. He's just split 30.5. So... If he can keep this up, he's going to go sub four minutes. But uh, we've seen some interesting tactics so far. And coming into the halfway turn, we've seen a couple of guys get a little bit excitable down that first 200 metres and not paced it quite as well as they maybe could have done. But let's see what happens here. First to turn at the 200 mark, the halfway mark. Vista of Sheffield. Williams of Millfield just about in second place. In third place, very close indeed. Drysdale of Wolverhampton and Travis of University of Aberdeen. Yeah, Vista still holding on there. We've seen some good performances in this lane closest to us. Ruben Vista, the latest of the swimmers here, doing well down in lane number nine. Still keeping that technique going as he goes in to the 50 mark. But he still has that lead around about half a second over Williams right next to him. So these swimmers, the four swimmers, kind of dragging each other along here. Closest to us, nine, eight, six, seven all on the near side the swimmers the fastest swimmers in the middle now trying to come back but these four pacing each other really well and in a 400 andy sometimes important to have someone beside you well it's almost a race of two halves here isn't it down, down the bottom of the pool in nine eight seven and six the guys going very well indeed vista over first now 259 two so he's going to come back in what 60.7 if he can do that he's going to go under four minutes and with a qual uh, qualification time of 402 a lifetime best of 401 to go under that four minute barrier he looks really good as well Look at his legs starting to really drive his legs maybe his feet coming out a little bit high kicking a little bit of air but this is an impressive swim Ruben Vizda of City of Sheffield well if you want to get yourself on telly this is how to do it isn't it go out in lane number nine closest to the camera Go out first, stay there, finish well. What a swim. Come on. Come on, Ruben. Sub four. Sub four. I think he's going to do it, you know. I really do. Got a cracking swim here. City of Sheffield swim squad. Ruben Vizda. 
the 21 year old looks like he's going to win heat five the last of the unseeded heats in this men, men's 400 meters freestyle he does the time oh the time four minutes point one one oh well you can't get much closer than that what a swim it was well i don't know if if I want to be utterly delighted that he did a massive lifetime best over a second 1.2 second lifetime best on 400 meters freestyle or that he just missed that four minute barrier by 11 100s but super swim well done sir well done great swim yeah great stuff there from Ruben and very close for second as well in the center they all closed up like next four swimmers all in the 401 range Ruben Vista takes that one four minutes point one one and look at that 401 7 16 36 and 51 great contest there in that fifth heat and now Andy six heat some of the big guys coming in here indeed we do the big boys the defending champion actually in this men's 400 meters freestyle goes in lane four Luke Turley of Bath British champion back just 12 months ago but it's a good heat William Bell in five from Loughborough. What a training group they've got. Coached by Andy Manley. They've got Hector Pardo, the uh, Olympic open water swimmer. Of course, they've got the two Irish Whiffin brothers. I wonder if Dan Whiffin's going to win the Olympics in that uh, 800 or 1500 or both. Also got Felix Obock as well from Austria in that training group. Some of them currently at training at altitude, actually over in Arizona at the moment that and Flagstaff heat six of seven heats of men's 400 free fastest seed in lane four Luke Turley of Bath with William Bell of Loughborough in five and three it's Alexander Sargent of Millfield those are the fastest three seeds and uh, well in this 400 meters freestyle one job to do very simply for these fast guys it's just make sure that you get a decent lane for the final and started off well already in that fastest lane look at that stroke beautiful from the fastest seed Luke Turley well, his lifetime best is 348.3 well we've seen swimmers no swimmers so far under four minutes they've all all been four minutes point point one one the fastest of them but uh, really some special swimming lots and lots of lifetime best and suddenly the quality really has stepped up massively and look at this right in the center beautiful to watch Luke Turley well let's see what he goes through we've been seeing 55s and 56s 54 8 lovely turn as well really using the momentum off the wall on that first turn so leading is Luke Turley of Bath second possibly up there in lane number three is Alexander Sargent of Millfield in five at the moment it's William Bell of Loughborough so leading in four it is Luke Turley and he looks good so that's the third that's the 150 meter turn three lengths down five lengths to go and this is the second last heat of the men's 400 meters freestyle yeah Luke Turley controlling this one looking almost effortless at the front of the field Luke Turley in the early stages coming down to the halfway point again as you said Andy just always trying to make those top eight places for the final one more heat to come after this one of course so can't take anything for granted but you would think if the top three is sufficiently ahead of the others they might be able to claim that place in the final certainly top two you would think at the moment Turley and Alexander Sargent safely in the positions to make that final tonight but Turley looking absolutely supreme at the moment well he does look good he's gone up pretty quick as well 153 at the halfway mark you never quite know what tactic these guys are going to put in in the heats because they don't need to absolutely blast it they really don't they probably need to only go about uh, 356 to make the final but his lifetime best is 348 and it looks like he was certainly practicing that front end of the race maybe just turned it off a little bit now we'll have to see what the split here on this uh, end of the third hundred is for the 24 year old Luke Turley right in the center there from Bath he's still going you know he really is he's still giving it plenty 29 7 
He's uh, 2.53, so I reckon he's going to be about 2.51 or so, something like that, 2.51 points. He still looks very good. He's still stretching it out. It's a good discipline, this, from Luke Turley in lane number four. Yeah, certainly very good. The stroke coming on. He's gone to the legs just slightly now, trying to stay ahead of Alexander Sargent. So the Bath swimmer ahead of the Millfield swimmer. And they're looking like they're going to secure that place in that final. It's very close for third. Third place could be important, actually. Bell just ahead of Anis as they go through that final turn. But Turley and Sargent uh, looking very good here as they come into the last 25. So Alexander Sargent's in three, having a go from Millfield. And what a squad they've got now. What a training group. With Matt Richards, of course, the world champion, 200 freestyle. Jimmy Guy in there, multiple Olympic champion. 352.5. Well, that was a good solid swim. 348 is his lifetime best. He's done a good job there. Relatively comfortable, but practiced certainly at the early speed. Finished in 29.3, which is good discipline. 29.1 from Sargent. Slightly faster to come back and uh, record a 353.19. So that is a two-second lifetime best, almost two and a half seconds lifetime best from Alexander Sargent. And Ryan Livingston there at Millfield doing a super job with that programme. It really is. So the result of the second last heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle, Luke Turley wins it. He'll have a relative centre lane, I'm sure, for the final this evening. Sargent second, new lifetime best for him. David Annis of Royal Wolverhampton School finishing in third. Good swim from him as well. And he's got a cracking chance of making through to the big final with William Bell in fourth. Dangerous place to finish in fourth with the final heat still to come here. And Kieran Bird is the class of this field. Has said that 3.46 that he went to win the trials for Tokyo three years ago. An utterly extraordinary swim that was. Almost out of nowhere, really. Well, it certainly took me by surprise. Look at that hat. Bird. Olympic rings on it. Gotta love that. Yeah, that's a statement to the rest of the field here. And, well, the big one now for Kieran Bird, securing his place in that final lane number four. Tyler Melbourne Smith next to him. Another Loughborough swimmer. Bath against Loughborough. See a few of those battles this week. Well, we certainly will. Interesting tactic for Kieran Bird. He's got his Olympic hat on from three years ago in the heats of this trial it is the aquatics gb swimming championships for 2024 it is a national national championship so the winner will be the national champion but uh, it's also of course the trial for paris which uh, happens in end of july not that far away now great britain's trials relatively early in the swimming program we've gone relatively early compared to quite a few uh, other countries Quite a few countries, including certainly America, very late. They go in June. Olympics in July. So this first 100 metres, Kieran Bird leading, as expected. Going with him is Tyler Melbourne-Smith from that, uh, again, that Loughborough University, Andy Manley stable of distance freestyle. And what a training group they've got there. Just amazing. No wonder they're producing good quality swimmers with those Whiffin brothers just going absolutely crazy on the world stage. And also Felix Obok, I think he's been, he been world champion, I think. 400 free, 800 free, I'm very good indeed. And Hector Pardo, and he'll be representing Great Britain again in the open water Olympic Games in Paris. Had that horrible injury in Tokyo, got elbowed in the eye with his goggles on in a bit of a, well, a bit of a bun fight. And apparently it was a, a mistake, it was a, it was an accident, but goodness me, I tell you what, it looked like he'd been seven rounds with Mike Tyson. It really did. And I think he tweeted a picture of his eye, and a boxer tweeted back and said, ooh, that's a bad one. When, when a boxer says you've got a bad eye injury, you know you've got something special going oh, on. Oh, dear. Yeah, I think I saw that one. I remember that. The open water. When you said it was a mistake, I thought you were going to say a mistake in identity rather than just an accident. <laughs> it could have been that as well, I tell you what. I mean, did it, oh, it, it, open water, brutal, isn't it? It looked like a drive-by shoot. I mean, honestly, it was, It was. if you can, I don't know if you can 
I don't know what you do, Google it or something? Do Hector Pardo eye injury or something, but don't, uh, sit down, don't have a cup of tea with you, it's not particularly pleasant. Anyway, here we go, let's uh, give you an update. This is the final heat of the men's 400 metres freestyle. Kieran Bird looking good, he's gone out comfortably down the first 100, but he's pushing this, this is impressive. He's got his Olympic hat on from three years ago, and he looks very good indeed. This is the 300 metre turn coming up now. And, well, he's swimming away from the field, Kieran Bird. You can only qualify for the Olympic team in the final. So if you do the consideration time, which is 345.4, massive, massive 3.345, you can only do it in the final. So this is a very fast heat swim here. It is. He's going to go 340-something, I think, uh, which is very quick. But... Uh, even if he goes 345.3 in the heats this morning, he's got to do it again in the final this evening. Interesting uh, interesting selection policy. You've got to do it in the final and win. Yeah, that's right. That's been the uh, kind of standard, hasn't it, for the major championships, for the Olympics and world championships. For the paras, it's slightly different. You can achieve the nomination time in the heats this morning, so keep an eye for the para swimmers as they come up to their events but it's the final or nothing here for the Olympians so Kieran Bird put in a really good swim Tyler Melbourne Smith in lane number five second at the moment from Loughborough but finishing well right outside of him is Harry Wynne Jones of City Milton Keynes oh an easy finish from Bird what's he finished with there well he really turned off the gas at the end 60 point last hundred meters for Kieran Bird to win the final heat 351.5 so he's going to have a centre lane for that uh, final this evening 353 8 from Tyler Melbourne Smith second third was Reese Grady 354 fourth was Harry Wynne Jones so let's uh, just confirm the result then for you the final heat of the men's 400 meters freestyle Kieran Bird wins it 351 turn the gas off after 300 let's see what he's got to finish with this evening Tyler Melbourne Smith second They'll certainly be through to the final. I think uh, Reese Grady will make it as well. Harry Wynne Jones, 354.4. It's going to be close. I think he might make it. So if we've got the qualifiers. So qualifiers for the final. Well, top eight get through. 357's made it. So Kieran Bird is fastest through. Turley second, Sergeant third, Melbourne Smith fourth. 351. Well, they've got to go 345 4. So there's going to be some serious pace, early speed in that uh, final this evening if they're going to go close to that consideration time. There's the uh, finishes 11 through 20. And there's uh, the top 30. 402.56 made the top 30. Don't forget, there's three finals here for the able body swimmers there's the A final, the B final. And of course the junior final they fill it up purely on speed so the fastest eight will go in the a final then the next fastest eight nine through 16 will go in the b final and then the remaining juniors who are not in the a or the b they will fill up the next eight places in the junior final there's the last page of this heat to the men's 400 meters freestyle and handing over to uh, john mason Yes, thank you very much, Andy Jameson. What a fantastic way to start this morning's racing. We saw personal bests from a bunch of athletes there, and of course, Kieran Bird and Luke Turley gonna be on head-to-head. -head. Remember, it has to be done in the final. Uh, that nomination time, and whoever gets first is gonna be making it, if they make that time, onto the Paris team. So a fantastic way to start this morning's action. Uh, of course, coming up next is the men's 400 meter freestyle multi-class para event. So just a reminder, you're gonna be seeing a lot of different classes in this, and and to make it into the final is going to be based on points. So the man taking us through that action is going to be Paul Noble. So it's back to commentary. Thanks, John. And as we have heard earlier this morning, all the S classes compete together in these multi classification events. They will have a points total based on the time. So the points are based on the world record mark or equivalent for the particular classification generate points total a thousand points will be equivalent to a world record swim and the top points earners will progress to the final 
This is the multi-class. Not sure if that graphic's quite right, but we have the multi-class swimmers coming up very shortly. Two heats of this one. There are some swimmers, we should say, that are not eligible to progress to the final. There's a couple of reasons for that. Some of the uh, events that we see here at these British Championships not offered at the Paralympic Games. So some of the swimmers not swimming in a Paralympic event won't take place in the final. And also some swimmers who haven't been internationally classified. Of course, classification for the para swimmers is done on international standard. There's national classifications done by the individual countries. And only internationally classified swimmers can progress to the Paralympic final. So because this event is targeting qualifiers for the Paralympic Games, then those that are not internationally classified won't be able to progress to the final. So we drop a couple, but it's a one and only chance for a few of the swimmers here to post their time for this 400 freestyle. They line up on this one. Zach Washington Young goes right at the top there in lane number two from Ealing. Bruce D from North Atlantic Swim Club goes in lane three. They're both swim in the S6 classification. So they're side by side there at the top. We've got three swimmers in the S8 classification. That's Owen Say, Max Davies, and Jamie Curtis from the Blue Cap there. And Lewis Jones completes the line up in the S9 class. Closest to us, see the impairment. Jones just one arm. Of course, S1 to S10. No swimmers with a physical impairment. S1 being the most impaired and S10 being the least impaired. So, looking at the times for the two swimmers going over at the 100, just under the five minute mark, just as we saw in the 400 freestyle earlier. Always good to get dip under these barriers. Max Davis in lane number five, entry time of 5.01, and Owen C in lane four, entry time of 5.02. So it's nice to be nice to see them dip under. Probably the points totals that we're looking for, the highest points totals, might be the two S6s, the two lower classification numbers. You're just going to be right at the top of your shot here. Just about to come into picture now, Bruce D youngster just getting in ahead of Zach Washington at the minute as they go through the 150 but a long way to go of course as we said earlier we can have qualification standards set in the heats for the para swimmers maybe Bruce D and Zach Washington may be the most likely to challenge that nomination time stands at 5 12 15 so it's going to be a tough ask for either of those two to get inside those times but see how they progress as we go through this 400. So Jamie Curtis in from Bristol. Quite fast here, 223.31, so well on course to try and achieve that uh, personal best time that he has of 457.85. Christy just getting the edge over Zach Washington Young as they go into the halfway point standing British record for the S6 classification so keep an eye on that as well it's going to have to be a good swim for any of the S6s at the top to look for those nomination times Jamie Curtis swimming as well it's slightly different Andy for the Paralympians some of the swimmers not been able to progress to the final so this will be the one and only chance for the likes of Jamie Curtis, Lewis Jones and Max Davis to post their time here. They are not internationally classified so they can't swim in the final time. Paul, well, it's an interesting idea that they're not internationally qualified, uh, classified. Why, why is that? Why, why would they not be able to be classified in time for this, uh, this championship? Well, there's a lot of demand for classifications internationally across the world and they have to prioritise the people that they think are going to be at the top of the international game. There's only a few international qualifier air classifying teams, so it's very difficult to get an international classification. You've got to go to one of the World Paris Series events, get classified there, and Britain have obviously got their priority people that they want to get classified before the games. I'm sure these guys, the young swimmers, they'll be on the list very shortly. 
Well, this is an impressive swim, certainly. The leader has gone out well. He won tactics here so far on all these 400 meters freestyles for the able body and these para athletes they got, some of them got a little bit excitable in the early phases but uh, well 416 he can certainly do his lifetime best here yeah jamie curtis he's been coming through the ranks we saw him maybe about a year or so ago making big strides the s8 swim up with that blue cap just been pressed by lewis jones now with that yellow cap the s9 swim up and Lewis Jones maybe just forging ahead here. Curtis went out very strong, as he said, but look at the power of Lewis Jones here with that arm impairment. He's gone to the legs. He's got the advantage of that kick in the, the late stages. Is he going to finish it on his good arm? He certainly is. Good discipline there at the end for Lewis Jones. 4.53.18 for him, Jamie Curtis, 4.54. 37 that's inside their personal best time so good stuff from the guys there at the front of the field they're followed on by max davis just on the five minute mark from max and six 100s outside his personal best but here's bruce d he has swum away from the rest in this field let's have a look at the time for bruce 5 23 24 that's a huge improvement on his personal best of 531 well done Bruce D and Zach Washington Young will be the final summer to finish. Speaking of Zach yesterday, he's telling me that he's 10 month old baby chance. He's going to be watching at home. So Zach Washington Young with that time of 5.39.42. But Zach Washington Young, Bruce D, they should progress to the final, I think. 740 points for Bruce D. Jamie Curtis, 730, great swim there. Max Davis, 689. You see that? Point, the time, the swimmers are ranked on points rather than times. Bruce D, although he wasn't into the wall first, has the highest number of points, 740 points. It's getting on to be quite a, a decent standard, 740 points with 1,000 points equivalent to the world record. There's the lineup for the second of these two para heat. You see the range of classifications here throughout. There's Sam Downey, probably the class of this field. World Championship finalist in 2022 and 2023 in this 400 freestyle. Manchester World Championships last year. Big success for Sam Downey from East Lothian. Very tough nomination time of 4.36.19. Best time is 4.42.88. So he's got to make a big jump if he's going to achieve that qualification, or that nomination standard, I should say. Of course, these standards, they are nomination standards. They, the para times have got me nominated to the Paralympics GB to confirm that and same for the Olympians as well Andy, isn't it? Indeed it is, it is a, a nomination to be put forward to the Olympic Association to be considered for the team. But there's a couple of differences, aren't there, in the selection policy, though, between the able-bodied and these Paralympic uh, swimmers. You can you can do the qualification standard here in the heats for the uh, for the para guys, which must be a decent advantage for, for them. Yeah, it certainly is. It gives you uh, two bites at the cherry. You can get the qualification standard, have a go at it in the, the heats in the morning, nothing to lose from that. Ollie Carter leading them out in the bottom. The, the para heats as well are, are ranked in terms of time right across the pool. They're not spearheaded at all. So the slower swimmers in terms of time will be at the top, the faster swimmers will be closest to us. And Ollie Carter with that 4.16.65 entry time, he's closest to us. He swims in the S10 class. Another one who's been at the World Championships in 2022 and 23, represented Scotland in the Commonwealth Games as well. Loved uh, to be in the Scotland team. Comes out, came out to his race at the Commonwealth Games in his kilt. Took the acclaim of the crowd there in Birmingham. And he would love to make it to his first Paralympics. Unfortunately, this is not a Paralympic event for the S10s. 
So Ollie Carter, Kieran Williams and Rowan Brennan and Zach Sturgis, the four swimmers closest to us, not able to qualify in this event. Paul, how do they decide which events are uh, uh, Paralympic events and which ones aren't? Because, I mean, the 400 freestyle, you know, it is for some but not for others. It seems interesting that they actually sort of pick and choose for some different classifications it is and some it isn't. That's right, yeah. That is, that's been a controversial one, actually. Because a lot of the S10 swimmers not sure why the 400 freestyle wasn't included. There's been a big drive to cut down the number of swimming events at the Paralympics. Because swimming and athletics dominate the number of events at the Paralympics as a whole. There, there is, uh, I think, 140 events, I think, at the Paralympics for swimming and more for athletics. So there's been a drive to cut them down. So a lot of the classes have lost events. Whereas normally all the classes would have done 50 freestyle and 100 freestyle. Now, some only do 50 and some only do 100. So they've cut down the number of events for each class. And this was one of the ones that was kind of a controversial one because nobody, there's no distance swimming opportunity now for the S10s. So that was one that caused a little bit of controversy. Yeah, I suppose it must be tough if you're going to cut something, which one do you cut? But 140 races, 140 events at the Paralympics. Goodness me, I hope you've got some throat lozenges uh, <laughs> in the commentary box there. Anyway, you've got 100 metres to go in this uh, second heat, this 400 freestyle. And another interesting one, actually, about the Paralympics. There's no single gender relays, all mixed relays now in the Paralympic Games. And they've been an absolute revelation. It's been fantastic at the World Championships, the mixed gender relays. They've been absolutely superb. Well, I have to say, I do love a, a mixed relay. Great Britain, of course, winning the gold medal in the able-bodied Olympics on that uh, mixed medley relay with Dawson and then PT and then James Guy and Anna Hopkin, a new world record to win gold. Uh, I'm a massive fan of those mixed, me mixed relays. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Let's see what Ollie Carter can do, though. It's from my neck of the woods. I've been five. And he is going very well. Lane number nine, so time not coming up on the scoreboard there. I can tell you it is Ollie Carter closest to us. He's entry time of 4.16.65. Sam Downey is taking it easy in the, the middle of the field. He's going to qualify for the finals. Ollie Carter is coming home now. It's going to be around about the 4.20 mark or so. Just over 4.20. One for the cards are 421.79. He'll have other events to come in the week, as will Kieran Williams and Rowan Brennan. Again, Great Britain with those mixed relays. Points totals coming up. There's only God turned everything into that, didn't he? Wearing his Commonwealth Games cap. Thomas Navarro Barber is the man. Really the highest number of points so far. Let's see what Sam Downey can do. Coming in now. Not sure he will challenge that points total. He doesn't almost though. Sam Downey, 735 for him. Time for Sam Downey, 45378. So that's only Carter. Carter wearing his Commonwealth Games cap. Here in Bird with his Olympic cap. Maybe a theme coming in. Thomas Navarro Barber tops the points, Ollie Carter in second and Sam Downey in third. So Navarro Barber and Sam Downey have progressed to the final. Unfortunately, the S10s won't be able to do that as it's not a Paralympic event. There's the highest number of points. Thomas Navarro Barber, Ollie Carter, Bruce D, Sam Downey, they will all return for that final. So Again, as you see there, a number of servers not classified or not having Paralympic events. So Zach Washington Young will take his place in the final as well in 12 spots. So it's going to be a bit of sparse final, but it should be a good one. I think we're going to have the likes of Sam Downey have a go at that qualifying time. I hope so. It'd be good to see. It's a little bit of a shame so many uh, athletes not allowed to progress, particularly on the fact that they're not internationally uh, what is it, internationally uh, classified, uh, classified, yeah. classified? Excuse me, I was going to say it, ranked, classified, yeah. yeah. It's an unusual one because normally at the uh, British Championships they do are able to progress, but I think the, the focus is very much on achieving that Paralympic qualifying time. And if you can't 
if you've not got a time to achieve, then you know that's it. Why do you get to go to the final? That's the reasoning. Indeed. So next uh, race up is the women's two and the butterfly. Three swimmers in this first heat of eight. And I've got to tell you, in the final heat, Laura Stevens goes our new world champion in the women's two to fly. What a race that was! A brilliant swim out in Doha. World Championships held in February. Interesting uh, timetabling that uh, for a World Championships in February of the year of the Olympics. But uh, Laura Stevens, well, I bet she was delighted it was held then. She went along and won the 200 fly. Brilliant swim, fantastic last 50, but just paced so well all the way through. So three swimmers in this first heat of the women's 200 metres butterfly. Eight swimmers in the second heat and then uh, all ten lanes after that, so it will be filled. So 71 swimmers entering this 200 fly. Of course, there's the uh, junior standard to be achieved in order to be considered for the team for the European Juniors, which are going to be held in July in Vilnius and in Lithuania, and then of course the Olympic uh, time. So the Olympic consideration time a very, very quick, 2.07.96. The junior time, 2.14.7. I think we can see a couple of juniors potentially do that here in the later heats, but this is uh, heat one of eight. Uh, up there in the green hat of Swansea University is Rachel Hornby. She's in three. The third of these three from seed time, but they're all very close indeed. Just two tenths of a second splitting these three swimmers on entry time. First to turn in lane number four, Sophia Gledhill of City of Bradford with Gia Bothersall of Rural Metro actually turning third, closer to us in lane number five in the black cap. But they're right in the centre, Sophia Gledhill from the city of Bradford. Her entry time, 2.23.13. Lifetime best of 2.22 flat. So hopefully she can get uh, somewhere close to that 2.20 mark. She's swimming well at the moment. This really is good swimming. Staying nice and flat. Ooh, a little bit of a glide into the wall there, but not bad at all from Gledhill. So Gledhill leads with 50 metres to go, just one length left in this first heat of the women's 200 metres butterfly. Gledhill in the centre, the green hat of Rachel Hornby. Les France and Chris Saget, her coaches there up in Swansea. Or over there in Swansea, I should say. So Gledhill leading from Hornby. Just about in second, it's very tight for second between Hornby and Hothersall of Wirral Metro closer to us. But no doubt about the winner of this first heat of the women's 200 fly. It is Sophia Gledhill. And her time is 220.55. That's great. Well, her lifetime best was 222.0. And she's just gone 220.55. One and a half second lifetime best from her. Well done. Great swimming. Well paced as well. A good attack. A good attack, but, but well paced, evenly paced. And she had something left at the end there, Paul. She did, yeah, she looks very pleased with that as she looks up to the scoreboard. It's quite a small scoreboard, actually, around about 50 or 60 metres away. Sophia Gledhill, 220.55, taking that one. Great swim from her, Rachel Hornby in second from Swansea University. First of those eight heats. So heat two of the women's 200 flight. And in lane number four. Evie O'Halloran Hutchinson of Northumberland and Durham performance. Imagine filling out her entry. Evie O'Halloran Hutchinson of, of Northumberland and Durham performance. I don't know how many letters that is. It would take half an hour to fill in your entry times, wouldn't it? Gracious me. She's quick. She's in four. So the full lineup is uh, Fitzpatrick of Bristol in lane number one. Nobody in lane zero, right at the very top. So in lane one, it's Fitzpatrick of Bristol. Two is Dilts of Tiverton. Three, Baxter of Bath University. O'Halloran Hutchison in lane four. Low in five of Sydney Leicester. Zara Davis of Millfield in six. Sadie Hunter of Peterborough in lane number seven. And in eight, it's Madison Johnson of Rotherham. Right at the top there, in lane number one, 
Zara Fitzpatrick of Bristol. Just about first to turn, 30.77 down that first 50. It's a high uh, breathing position. Driving the water back. She's saying it's a little bit high, not quite, uh, not quite as flat as some of the other swimmers right in the centre, maybe in that black hat in lane number five, Alison Lowe of uh, City of Leicester. But a good first hundred from Fitzpatrick up in one. She's going to turn what second, maybe first of the 50, second of the 100, 66, eight for her, 66, five for the leader is Alyssa Lowe of City of Leicester, and the City of Leicester swimmer. Easy speed down that first 50 and looks pretty good now, but uh, the lane's closer to us in six and seven, started to come through. That's uh, Zara Davis of Millfield in the green head in six and Sadie Hunter of Peterborough in lane number seven. Yeah, we saw that well-placed race on that first heat. Let's see what we're gonna get on this second. Looks like a close contest here, definitely. Low and Hunter, Hunter, maybe with the momentum there. Just checking the, the split for Hunter there, 36. She's certainly the fastest in the field as she went through that third 50. Is that going to carry her home? It's very close between four swimmers here, but Hunter keeping that head down in the final stages. And she's heading for home, Andy. Great chance of taking this one. Well, there's quite a few swimmers finishing well here, particularly Sadie Hunter in lane number seven for a city of Peterborough. And she swam this really well, paced it beautifully. Let's see, very good discipline as well, head down inside that last five metres from Sadie Hunter. 220.62, uh, another almost two-second lifetime best from the Peterborough swimmer. There she is. And the 15-year-old, really amazing swim from her. Come to, the, come to a championship like this, Aquatics GB swimming championships for 2024, essentially the national championships, and she swims almost a two-second lifetime best to win heat two with the women's 200 fly. That's Zadie Hunter of City of Peterborough. Great swim. Low second, Davies third, Dilks fourth, and Halloran Hutchinson fifth. Very well paced. That's two heats down, eight in total. Heat three of this women's 200 metres butterfly. The fastest seed is Lois Child of Harrogate in lane number four, with Harriet Smith in lane number five. There's eight juniors in this field. It's probably easier to tell you the ones that aren't juniors. Lane three and lane nine. All the others are juniors, and of course they can be selected for the European Junior Championships in Lithuania in the summer. You've got to be born in 2006 or later, six, seven, eight, nine, or 10. And the qualification standard for the juniors that they'll be looking for, well, it's pretty quick. It may be a little bit out of the reach of this heat, but uh, certainly there's some swimmers who can do it. And 214.7 is the uh, qualification time for the juniors. Lane nine closest to us actually has the fastest lifetime best of these swimmers in a 2.15.4, so expect her to go out pretty well from the University of Stirling, that's uh, Madeline Robertson, and she has gone out well, but uh, certainly probably the fastest right in the centre there, Lois Child of Harrogate, and Lois looks good at the moment, she really does, but it's hard to, uh, really hard to pace a 200 fly, but she looks very comfortable down this uh, first 75 metres or so, and she's accelerating into this 100 metres uh, turn here. This is going to be very interesting indeed, Paul. She really looks very good at this halfway mark. Yeah, again, another one of the youngsters, born in 2010, just had her, her birthday as well in March. It's only just 14, those child, the youngest in this field. And you have to say that really the occasion's not intimidating the youngsters, is it, at all? They've stepped up and they're really producing good swims here, but the 200 fly, well, has a habit of coming back to bite you if you go out too far. So let's see what Lois Child can do. Harrogate District really looking good here as they're coming up to this final turn. Yeah, two lanes up from her is Matilda Ashcroft, City of Leeds. So the Yorkshire swimmer's going well, and right down here, Madeline Robertson 
in lane number nine, right in the mix as well. Just 100 behind Ashcroft at that turn. But the youngster, Lois Child, is she going to be caught now? Looking like a strong finish from the City of Leeds swimmer. Matilda Ashcroft really pushing through strong. It is indeed Ashcroft uh, just taking over the lead in that City of Leeds, the yellow hat with the blue shark on it. Also going well right at the bottom of the pool. Just coming into shot there with a black hat is Madeline Robertson of University of Stirling. And these two both finishing very well. This is the tough part of a 200 fly. On the final stroke, oh my goodness me, hardly anything to choose between first and second. A couple of tenths, less than three tenths of a second. Matilda Ashcroft of City of Leeds gets the touch to 19.45 right on her lifetime best, her lifetime best, 214 to 1941. So full 100s from her lifetime best, but a really good swimmer till the Ashcroft wins. The 16-year-old ahead of Madeline Robertson of Sterling. There we go, confirmation of the result then. From lane two, Matilda Ashcroft wins it from City of Leeds. And lane nine, Madeline Robertson second. Well, so much for spearhead. <laughs> Centre lane's meant to be the fastest, but lanes two and nine coming first and second with lane eight in third. Ashcroft, Robertson. Widowson. So here's heat four. Heat four of eight, we're rattling through these heats. This women's 200 metres butterfly. And the fastest seed right in the centre. In this Green Ones Beetham of Camden Swiss Cottage. Isabella Shearing of City of Sheffield in lane five, the second fastest seed into this heat four. So another five juniors in this heat four of the women's 200 meters butterfly. And again, lots of opportunity to make it through the final. Aquatics GB really have put on an excellent meet here, but they've given the swimmers a super chance of getting through and having another swim, an evening swim. And uh, with the A final for the fastest eight, the B final for both swimmers ranked nine through 16 after the heats this morning. Regardless of age, you can be junior in the, in the A final or junior in the B final, it doesn't matter, it's just the fastest 16 will go through to the A final and the B final respectively, and then uh, of course, the remaining juniors can go through to that junior final. So, great opportunity, and particularly opening it up that little bit more for the juniors. Such a good idea with the Los Angeles Olympics in 2028 already on the mind of so many. I've got to say, I really, really would love to go to Los Angeles Olympics there. It's, uh, it was the first Olympics that I swam in. It's a fantastic city. My daughter went to UCLA, my son went up there in... Uh, University of California, Santa Barbara. I just love that area. But my first Olympics, 1984, little kid in the sweet shop I was poor. I didn't know what was going on, and I absolutely loved it. Yeah, well, it was my first Paralympics as well, but not in LA, in New York for the Paralympics. So, you know, New York, LA, not bad, not bad. We, we did well, I think. It sounds Lucked, like a song. Out on this. It sounds like a song, New York, <laughs> it LA. Does, yeah. <laughs> Olympics, they should write a song with all yeah, that lot we'll, in there. We'll, uh, We'll burst out a song later on in the week, maybe. It's day one, Andy. But for Jack, five, five Paralympics. Do you ever get muddled up on which one was which and where you won your medals? <laughs> I mean, you got 15 Paralympic medals. Do you ever, do you ever oh, which, did I get four in that one or three? What a problem, <laughs> well, lovely problem. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, just let me uh, let me just uh, give you a quick update on the on the racing here because uh, these, uh, these swimmers in, uh, in heat four going very well indeed. And up there in lane number three, it is Matilda Potter of City of Leeds. Leeds having a really great, uh, really great meet. Fantastic meet so far. It's only, it's only morning one, but look at this. Is she going to get the touch? I think she does. Yes, she does. Very good swim indeed. 218.2. Well, it's another 2.2 second lifetime best for the Welshwoman, Matilda Porter of City of Leeds. The lifetime best was 220.4. Never made it under 220. Uh, 220 and she's just gone 218. 37-4, last 50, very good indeed, the 16-year-old, wow. So the 16-year-old wins, heat four, the women's 200 fly, 218-2, another sub-220, 218-5 for Emily Smith of Monson, a great swim from her as well, Chloe Cook third, also under 220. 
and none of those swimmers were seeded under 220, so that's three great swims from them. I haven't managed to check my time best for the rest of the field yet, but uh, we have had some super swimmers stepping up here, and it's so important. You get the opportunity, you come to a meet like this, you know, Adam Peaty was in the warm-up. You're in the same wow. session as Adam Peaty. Well, why not step up, do a lifetime best, and see what happens. This heat five of eight of the women's 200 meters butterfly. And Matilda Ransom goes for City of Cambridge in lane number four. Ella Bloxage in five from Salford. The fifth heat of eight heats of the women's 200 metres butterfly, the last of the unseeded heats, and Matilda Ransom of City of Cambridge. My first swimming club, actually. I learned to, learned to swim in the, in the pool there in, uh, in Cambridge. And absolutely lovely. Mrs. Barker, everyone who uh, is associated with, uh, with the Cambridge Swimming Club will know Mr. and Mrs. Barker, Ray and Jan. Unfortunately, Ray passed away a while ago. And, Jan very recently, but uh, absolute stalwarts, what they did. I mean, I don't know if she got an MBE, but she really should have done what she'd done for swimming. What she did for swimming there was just quite extraordinary. A soft spot for City of Cambridge. Anyway, City of Cambridge swimmer, Tilda Ransom, is the fastest seed right in the centre there in lane number four in that blue hat, but uh, probably the fastest down this first 75 or so. Closer to us, Jessica Higgins of Poole in lane number eight in the yellow hat. Yellow Hat's having a good morning, I think. I think City of Leeds pool right there as well. And we uh, saw a couple of others have a very good start. This two on the fly. Huggins will lead them though. Jessica Huggins from Pool. Bernholt from Barnum Copto. Right up there in lane number two and noon in third position. Well, again, these juniors really stepping up. I mean, it's an iconic venue here in London. I know that they do hold competitions here, regional events, but this is, you know, the British Championships. First time that the, the trials have been held here for a while, probably since, I think, 2012, I think. Was that the last time the trials were held here for the Olympic Games? So, you know, big, big stage, and the youngsters really delivering. And it's two yellow hats right out in front. Huggins, 141.1. Could be on for another good time here. Well, you're right, Paul. I think uh, Aquatics GB is, is putting on a super meet. I mean, they've got those wonderful uh, LED boards on the side of the pool, the branding everywhere, the, there's tickets. They've really gone to try and sell it out to get as great an atmosphere as they can because you go to the Olympic Games, let me tell you, the atmosphere there is absolutely fantastic. And uh, get used to it, you need to, because uh, if you don't have atmosphere at the trials and you go there, it can really squash you. Super swim this in lane number eight. It is Jessica Huggins of Paul to 18.09. Two seconds inside of her lifetime best. It seems to be a theme, really. Wear a yellow hat, and you, you're right, Paul. Yellow hat, two seconds inside your lifetime best. It seems to be pretty much that for each of the last, I don't know, three or four heats. Great swim from her to win heat five of the women's 200 metres butterfly. Second. Well, Huggins wins it. Bernholt second for Barnett Coxall. Ransom third for Cambridge. Leah Flower fourth for Bath University. Hunter in fifth from Swansea. And Ella blocks it. Well, her sister's swimming here as well. Famous to have two sisters in the. Uh, is essentially the Olympic trials, the Aquatics GP Swimming Championships. So, heat six, the first of the seeded heats of this women's 200 fly, and some big swimmers here. Kiana McInnes of University of Stirling, lifetime best 208. Well, we've been having two, two minutes 20, two 19s, two 18s. Suddenly, we got a 208 entry time, lifetime best set this season. Kiana McInnes, third fastest seed coming into this trials in lane number four so the black suit the black hat right in the center in lane number four is Keanu McInnes of the University of Stirling with Shannon Stott of City of Sheffield in five and so started very well as Constance Phillips with Nova Centurion down the bottom here in the black hat and so it looks like Phillips in eight and McInnes in four Maybe uh, also going well in six down his first 50 metres is uh, Edie Price of Mount Kelly. And she can do the uh, junior qualification time here of 
well. 2.14.60 is their lifetime best, and junior qualifi qualification time, 2.14.77. So we'll keep an eye out uh, for that from the Mount Kelly student. Just had her 15th birthday, and she's started well in the white hat, about four lanes from the bottom of the pool there in lane number five. But no doubt about the leader at this halfway turn is Kiana McInnes of University of Stirling. I've seen Kiana, Kiana McInnes oh, a number of years now since she was a real youngster in Scotland and she's really on great form this year. She is definitely targeting this event, I think, trying to make that Olympic nomination time and she's going to have a real chance. It's going to be very tight, but McInnes looking very, very good here, comfortably ahead as they come into the last turn. Shannon Stockholm, well, City of Sheffield. But Kenneth has been so strong. I saw her swimming at Edinburgh a couple of months ago. She looked absolutely fantastic then, building into these trials, and she's going to be comfortably into this final. I think. Well, it should take something like a 2.13, I think, to make it through to the final. So this is uh, an impressive heat swim. Doesn't need to swim that fast, but she's certainly pushing it, practicing her race pace, race tactics here. And head down, breathing twos is really good discipline down the final 50 of a 200 fly here from Kiana McInnes and well her coach is Steve Tigg and Brad Hay what a great job they've done with the Sterling program up there in Scotland there's so many others as well in, the, in that program two of eight six so not just outside of a lifetime best well a lot of swimmers just doing enough to make it through to the final but not Kiana McInnes in four there what a swim that was very fast so McInnes wins it Shannon Stott second third was uh, Katerina Price of uh, Bath University. Fourth, Constance Phillips of Nova Centurion. But what an attack down that, uh, well, the whole thing really. 2086 with a lifetime best of 280. Very good indeed. She just looked, uh, you know, not much in it at all for Kiara McInnes there. And she looked there a bit nonplussed about it. 20866. Almost trying to keep the smile off her face. And that, excellent, wasn't it? To the fly, uh, smile. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Did you see her? Did you see her at the end there? She was like, oh, really? Yeah, great. <laughs> maybe try, maybe try not to breathe too heavily as she's going to be on the TV. I tell you what, if I just done a to the fly, I'd be doing my Wallace and Gromit impression. That is such a hard <laughs> race. Oh my word, it is tough. It really is tough. So, heat seven, second last heat to the women's 200 meters butterfly Emily Large the fastest seed in lane number four there she is and part of that uh, fabulous program they've got going at Millfield now not, not just taking on the high school swimmers the school swimmers but they've also now got a senior program and it's working so well of course with uh, Jimmy Guy there and Matt Richards two Olympic gold medalists in one training program at a high school that's not too bad is it wow large in four the fastest seed in this second last heat of the women's 200 flight large from millfield it's the uh, fiance of uh, matt richards that's a family isn't it if that's uh, if that keeps going goodness me so four lengths of the pool butterfly the second last heat of this women's 200 flight large going out in the center there in the black hat also going with her is uh, Yasmin Perry of the University of Aberdeen in lane six. And between them, those two, is Lucy Fox of Wickham and District and the green hat right in the centre there. So tough to pace a 200 fly. You've got to have easy speed down the first, certainly the first 50, and try, if you can, to get to 100 without putting too much effort in because the second 100 on the 200 fly so tough and large. Looks really good at this uh, halfway halfway turn. Paul, did you uh, do many 200 flies? I know you're a great 100 fly, Olympic, uh, Paralympic champion 100 fly, but did you do many 200s? Uh, not that many. It wasn't a Paralympic event. I did it from time to time. Never quite got it right, I don't think. Such a great excuse. It yeah. wasn't a Paralympic no, no, event. No, no. I wish it, it wasn't was an Olympic, Olympic event. event. <laughs> it was not Olympic event. You must have done 200 flies. At the majors? I, I did not not at the majors. No, I was uh, I was uh, swim up, swim back, get out, have a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like turning around at that 100 meters turn at all. I did one actually. I did Olympic trials in uh, N88. I went uh, 107. I know, Scott, 58 for the first 100, 107 for the second 100. <laughs> oh my word! 
<laughs> and that was it. Oh, and that was when I that, did my Wallace and Gromit impression. <laughs> Paul, it was not pretty. <laughs> anyway, this, uh, I was going to say, talking about pretty, I, I don't, don't know if you described two of the fly as pretty, but uh, Emily Large really could swim here, and she's just watched the previous heats, one in the 208 from Keanu McInnes, and similar tactic here, it is interesting. They can't do a qualification standard in the heats, they can only do it in the final. That uh, time is 2.079, it's a very fast one. She's going to be 2.10 or so. Yep, 2.10.7. So Large wins the second last heat of the women's 200 fly. 2.13.6 from Lucy Fox in second. 3.217.5 from uh, Yasmin Perry. But uh, a good swim from Large there. Her best is 2.073, so it's a solid... I was going to say comfortable, she's breathing pretty hard, but I don't think you can do anything else but breathe hard on the 200 fly. Such a tough event. I would say it's the toughest on the programme. There's, there's lots of chat, isn't there? 200 fly, 400 medley, 1500 freestyle. Anyway, each 7 of 8 of the women's 200 fly is won by Emily Large. A good swim from her from Millfield. You see Fox second, third Yasmin Perry. And Coco Croxford in fourth. The final heat, well, we had an amazing set of results, certainly from the women's side at the World Championships in Doha in February of this year, and the winner of the women's 200 fly, the world champion long course in lane number four, Laura Stevens, coached by Dave Hemmings from the Loughborough performance. There she is. Cool, she looks serious as well. She's got a game face on, isn't she? Look at that. She has. Just wonder what the tactics for the world champion will be in this one. She's seen a couple of very fast swims in these previous two heats. Should be comfortable qualification for her, but she's going to have some competition. Kara Slosson in lane five as well, next to her. She's a best time of under the 210 mark as well. So, uh, Stevens. I expect it to have it all her own way. I just wonder what she's going to do in this one, Andy. You know, Paul, I think that's a fascinating question because she doesn't need to go that quick. One of the challenges, certainly on fly, is you try and swim fly slow, your body position changes, and instead of being flat, you tend to end up being sort of feet down, head up a little bit more and then it's hard to swim fly like that so you practice your race pace all the time in training you don't tend to practice swimming slow or medium uh, it's not that easy but certainly out to well down the first 50 is the world champion laura stevens as you'd expect in lane four but going well with her is kiara schlossen of edinburgh university in five and lucy grieve of university of sterling in six and these three leading at the moment coming into the halfway turn, the 100 metres turn, and Laura Stevens. And it looks like she's going a little bit, a little bit easier down the first 100. 62 2 at the 100, breathing off the wall. And her and her coach, Dave Hemmings, well, they've all had, have had a really good chat about tactics and how do you deliver your best self in the final? Because the qualification time, all of 20796, is not slow at all. Yeah, it's a tough one, and of course, uh, world champion Stevens, Emily Large, Keanu McInnes, they all have eyes on that time, and I think Laura Stevens did a good job in that third 50, just getting to the wall first. Lucy Grieve going well in second place. Better known as a sprinter, Lucy Grieve, 50 100 fly, which is doing a good 200 here, and a good turn from Lucy Grieve. It's underwater for quite a long time there, that's pulled her up alongside Laura Stevens. Stevens though, just with the edge, they come down to the last half length here. And in between those two, Slosson as well. And Stevens will be hoping to get to the wall first, confirm that place in that top eight in one of the centre lanes. And looks like Stevens just stretching away here, Andy. Well, she does look good. I say it's not easy to swim medium. <laughs> 2.10. The best is 2.7, she's just gone 2.10. So not wildly dissimilar from Emily Large in that previous heat. Going a 2.10 with a lifetime best of 2.07 or so. It's just not easy to do that. It's almost easy to just let it flow and let it go. But Stevens wins it, 2.10.5, so she'll have a centre lane for the final. Lucy Grieve second. Kira Schlossen third. So I think they'll all make it through to the final. Schlossen's going to be 
close. Stevens wins the final heat of the women's 200 fly. Greaves second, Schlossen third. And so we'll have to see who's made it through to that big final, the A final, the Paris final of this women's 200 fly. And Schlossen has made it, look, she's qualified six, but, well, McInnes in fastest, Stevens second, large third. That's gonna be a cracking final this evening. It really is. Uh, qualifiers 11 through 20. Top 16. Looking good for the B final as well. Of course, there's the A final, the B final, the junior final as well. So, uh, there's the top 50. Seventy one swimmers in total. Yes, there we go. So, So we're heading back to uh, John Mason in the studio. Yes, as uh, Andy said, that final tonight, that women's two fly is going to be an absolutely cracking one. Kiana McInnes, Emily Large and uh, Laura Stevens all going for that time. Oh, Only one can make it. Fantastic heat swims. But of course, that 207.96 is fast. Are they going to be able to do it? We'll have to wait and see. A great morning so far, but what we got still to come, loads to look forward to. We approach sort of the halfway mark. The men's 150 IM in the Parimalta class is next. We've also got the women's 200 meter freestyle events. They're going to be a brilliant. And of course, the men's 100 meter breaststroke finishing it off with the evening so for, the, for this morning. Uh, so still lots to come. Don't go anywhere. And it's back to the boys in commentary. Thanks, John. Yeah, we've moved to one of the events now, which is specific and unique to the para swimming program, the men's 150 meters individual medley. So just like a 200 meters individual medley, but without the butterfly at the start. Two swimmers in this one, Harvey Phillips from Love and Lyndon Longhorn from Derwentside. So they know each other pretty well, these two. As you can see, oh. they swim in the S4 classification. They are they have multiple limb impairments. The, S, the 150 meters individual medley is for swimmers in the, the higher impairment range. Yes. M1 to SM4 classifications. And these two have had some great tussles over the years. Lyndon Longhorn has been the man who has had the better of Harvey Phillips, the youngster, for a number of years now. But Harvey Phillips has been closing on Lyndon Longhorn. And he's had a very good breaststroke at Harvey Phillips, so watch out for that. Breaststroke always very important in a medley swim. And if it's going to make a difference here for Harvey Phillips. Strongest backstroker of the two is Lyndon Longhorn, the man who represented Great Britain at the Tokyo Paralympic Games in 2021. I remember Lyndon here in this very pool at the Olympic and Paralympic trials back in 2012 when he set his first British record in this event. So, Lyndon had a little bit of a break from swimming, didn't make the team for London, wasn't really around when the team was selected for Rio, but he came back and he made that Tokyo team for the Great Britain squad. So, almost 10 years after trying to make his first Paralympic Games, he made the team eventually in Tokyo, back again, trying to see if he can get to Paris. And the Great Britain team, certainly for the relays, they need the swimmers in the S3s and the S4 classifications. And Lyndon and Harvey are two of those swimmers. And the relays in Paris swimming made up of a maximum number of points, 20 point relay. So yeah, all the classifications of the swimmers have to add up to no more than 20 points. So you can't put all your higher class swimmers in it. You need swimmers in these classifications like Lyndon and Harvey Phillips. And these two, very important to the GB squad. And Lyndon, British record holder, he holds that record in uh, 249.62. He goes over in 202.26. Harvey has closed up. The youngster Harvey Phillips. See him again in the 100 breaststroke in a little while. 
So he's not going to have much of a rest, Harvey Phillips. But Lyndon Longhorn looking very strong. You see the impairment in his upper limbs, of course. Very similar impairment for the two of them. But Lyndon Longhorn will keep an eye on the clock. The, the nomination time, very fast, 2.36. So I don't think any of these simmers are going to be able to challenge that one. It's a real big ask to make that improvement, certainly considering the British record at 2.49. But Lyndon is going to take this one ahead of Harvey in 2.56.04. Here's the points, 515 points. Let's see what Harvey can do here. Is an entry time of 3.22, and that's going to be an improvement there. Look at that, 3.10.76 for Harvey Phillips. He'll be delighted with that one. As I said, he's getting closer to Lyndon Longhorn in a number of events. So it's good to see him take that improvement there from his entry time of 3.22. So Lyndon Longhorn, British record holder, takes that 150 IM. 2.56.04, great time from Harvey Phillips, 3.10.76 in second place. And he'll go away and prepare himself now for the 100 breaststroke a little bit later on this morning. As John said, lots more events to come. We're almost at the halfway point. And we are now moving on to the 200 freestyle heats for women. We are 71 entries in this women's 200 metres freestyle. Eight heats. Here's uh, heat one. Just three swimmers in it. Fastest seed, Natasha Dupree of Millfield. Amelia John in three, and Jessica Hum of Rushmore Royals in five. They're just one one hundredth of a second split these three swimmers on their entry times. 207.08 is the fastest seed in uh, lane four and 207.09 in lanes three and five. One one hundredth. That'd be quite a race if it ends up like that, wouldn't it? Really would. Decent dive, much better dive right in the centre there is uh, Natasha Debris of Millfield. Getting into a stroke now and slightly longer, slightly more rangy. Stroke closer to us is uh, Jessica Hum of Rushmore Royals. She's actually got the fastest lifetime best of these swimmers. These three swimmers closest to us on a 2.066. Whereas everyone's entered in a 2.07 flat. So 29.2, 29.4, 29.6 for the first three swimmers. Right at the top there. Looks like uh, Amelia John now taking over. In that blue hat of City of Cardiff. Must be very exciting for these swimmers to come to a championship like this and you know, swim in the next event from swimmers like Adam PT and some of those just absolute superstars from the, you know, from the women's side. We've just seen world champion on the 200 fly, but a world champion in this event in the 200 meters freestyle. She didn't do it. In this event, she didn't win the, uh, the 200 fly. It was the 400 medley that she won, but uh, in the final heat, Freya Colbert, two world champions women in one heat session at the British Championships. It's a great lineup for these trials. Maybe it's John going well for City of Cardiff. Well, City of Cardiff themselves got a great record in getting people on to the Olympic team over the years. He had a big long run of uh, swimmers making the Olympic the team in one event or another. And Amelia John, well, it's not going to be 1 100th between the swimmers here because Amelia John is away and clear. She certainly is. And this last 50 has been really something special. She sort of attacked it, attacked it after about 125. And the 50 meters in the middle, 125 to 175, very good. 2052. My best is 2070. Another almost two-second lifetime best. Amelia John swimming really well from City of Cardiff. They've done some good stuff here. Amelia John wins the first heat of the women's 200 metres freestyle, the 17-year-old. All three of them juniors. 205.2. And 203.1 is the uh, consideration time for the uh, European juniors. So she's 
have suddenly got pretty close to that. That's a very good swim indeed. Heat two of the women's 200 metres freestyle. Heat two of eight. And it was uh, one one hundredth split the three swimmers in the first heat. There's 21 one hundredths split all eight. Just 0.21 of a second. Splitting all eight swimmers on their seat time in this the heat the second heat of the women's two hundred three. So another four lengths of the pool heat two of the women's two hundred meters freestyle. Zara Kravecki of East Lothian. Kravec, I should say, of East Lothian in four. Hodgkiss of Repton in five. Fast to see that she's in lane number seven. Rebecca Reed of Aberdeen with that uh, white hat closer to us. Just one lane from the bottom there. The white hat of Rebecca Reed of Aberdeen. She's got the fastest uh, lifetime best of 206.5. But I won't be too surprised if many of these swimmers go, go 205 or even faster. They look very, very good down this first sort of 60, 65 metres of this second heat of the women's 200 metres freestyle. Look at that, all in a line. Well, only 21 hundredths of a second splitting them on paper coming into it. At the moment, there's not, not much difference to that with about uh, 80 metres gone. Yeah, a very close race. And maybe up the top there, maybe just taking it out. No yellow hats for us to look for this time, but is Kerry Henney from City of Liverpool and Blackhurst. Is he Blackhurst as well in lane number two? It was a good start from Zara Kravitz, but she dropped there to almost seventh place at the, the halfway point, but not much in it at all. But yeah, second half is sorting them out. And they, it, and again, that first heat, that excellent time down in the 205s, and as you said, not too far away from that European junior. Can anyone dip closer to that 203? Well, we'll, uh, we'll keep on top of that because there's a lot of juniors in this. Uh, seven of the eight are juniors, 203-1 is the target time that red hat up there city of liverpool actually the city of liverpool just uh, launched a linkedin page i've linked in with them for alumni ex city of liverpool swimmers uh, there's so many businesses that would like to sponsor so link in with them city of liverpool swimming club that's uh, kerry henny at the top and at the bottom is madison wrens both of city of liverpool but right in the center now in lane number five hannah hodgkiss of repton come through and she swam really well she's going to go 205 she does 205 43 very good swim from her. Well, that's another 1.4 second lifetime best. It's not tenths, is it? It's not even a second. It's, it's chunks coming off the lifetime best to it for the winners in these heats. A really good swim there from the Repton swimmer, Hannah Hodgkiss. Yeah, absolutely. Again, another improvement we've seen from these young swimmers in the heats. 205, 43 for Hannah Hodgkiss. That was an excellent swim. Blackhurst in second in the 206. And Alexandra Buller in third place well still a few more heats to come the big names will come later but these youngsters really performing well in these early heats and again a few more juniors as well in this one again 2009 for elizabeth land was her year of birth newcastle summer in lane number five the youngest in this field and alice young next to her 2000, uh, 2008 her year of birth as well so We'll see if they can edge closer to that time. But they are looking for the 203. Again, entry times here in the 206 range. Well, the first uh, couple of heats seeded very tight. Still, this is now heat three. It's only half a second between all of the swimmers who've swum so far, including this heat. Extraordinary. Heat three of the women's 200 metres freestyle. Ellie Walker of Tadcaster York Sport Swimming Squad in lane number four. She's the fastest seed. Closest to us is Chloe Bowne of Mount Kelly. And well, it's pretty even with the swimmers right in the centre and uh, Chloe Bowne closer to us. Let's see. Well, Chloe's actually at uh, second 25 of that first 50. She really has pushed it 28 2. Has she gone out too quick? She's right on the outside, not an easy place to uh, to swim from. Tactically, you've got to try and get out if you can, but not get out too fast, not get too excited down that first 100 metres, because the big guns really 
get towards this mark now with about 10 meters to go into the halfway turn and they really turn up the gas she's still going well though Kobe Bowne's going to be uh, possibly first to turn at the 100 meters mark possibly up there again in lane number three is Sophie Ben of Mount Kelly her teammate so it is Ben over first in lane three Bowne ended up third with uh, Libby Broder second the 18 year old in lane number two under the one minute mark at the halfway point and well might be Sophie Ben there possibly in lane number three just coming through not in fact Libby Broder I think in lane number two just coming through to take the lead of the goal for this last turn and still in contention is Chloe Brown but that's round about what a 33 there for that 50 just 32.8 maybe 32.5 so Another fast time in prospect here, maybe under the 205. Well, it'd be great to see coming back again now. At her is uh, Sophie Ben of Mount Kelly in three. So in two and three, Libby Broder and Sophie Ben fighting it out down this last 10 metres of heat three of the women's 200 metres freestyle. The white hat of the Mount Kelly swimmer, Sophie Ben's going to take it. She does. 204.97. Well, her lifetime best, 205.7, so she's just smashed it again. They just win the heat, and it seems to be lumps off lifetime best. A great swim from her. Very good indeed. And we're getting closer and closer to that European junior qualification standard. We really are. 203.1 is the European junior standard. 204.9, so just uh, less than two seconds outside of that. Sophie Ben winning heat three of the women's 200 free. Libby Broder second, Ellie Walker third, Lucy Parsons fourth for the City of Liverpool with Chloe Bowen ending up in fifth for Mount Kelly. You see uh, the swimmers come past us as they come out of the water sometimes and there's a lot of smiling faces as they pass us waving up to the crowds. So a lot of delighted swimmers over the performances this morning. Well Aquatics GB has put on a, an event here where everything is right. There's no reason why you can't come in here and step up and do a lifetime best. And if you do, well, you're right, Paul, that the smiles have told the story so far in the first few events of this 2024 Aquatics GB Swimming Championships. This is heat four of eight of the 200 freestyle for women. Emma Price, the freestyle specialist, maybe a bit more distance freestyler possibly. She's the fastest seed in lane number four. Starting well, closest to us is uh, Libby Freeman in lane number nine. The Northumberland and Durham performance swimmer, the 18-year-old. She's a junior. He can be born in 2006, seven, eight, nine, or ten to be considered for the European Junior Championships. And well, I'm thinking we're going to start getting close now in these. Uh, the second half of the women's 200 meters freestyle, close to those consideration times on the junior side. The, the senior is really quick, 156.8. That's very fast indeed. But the juniors at 203.13 is very achievable here, I think. Certainly, if the time still keep tumbling as we've seen in those previous heats, we could be on for something here. It's the green cap of Sophie Davis from Murfield, 17 year old just over the one minute mark slightly slower than that previous heat but not by much, and Emma Price in second place but it was good work off the turn there to take Sophie Davis a little bit clear of the others again another of these uh, Millfield stable of swimmers that they have and Paul, interesting tactics from her as well because she was a little bit slower at the 100 turn but but she was much more controlled at 50 and then started building it up into that 100 turn and so she's still keeping the momentum that she got in the second 50 in that third and into this fourth 50 as well yeah absolutely and that's taking her clear of the others just taking the pacing it out on that first 50 as you said Andy really strong on the second half of this one and she's going to be rewarded with a fast swim I think yes just getting a little bit tired now she's still going well though Sophie Davis at Millfield and the uh, high school swimmers really going well here Ruby Griffiths in lane seven from Mount Kelly might get second it's gonna be tight she maybe is just third but first was Sophie Davis I think that's the fastest time so far 205.05 
And another lifetime best by a full second from the winner. This time it's heat four, the women's 200 metres freestyle. Davis wins it, Compton second, the 16-year-old from Wickham and District. Ruby Griffiths in third, fourth was Priest, fifth Price. Rathbone Jones in sixth, but 205-0. Really good swim, a new lifetime best by over a second for her to win that uh, heat four at the women's 200 metres freestyle. Yeah, just shy of that best time, I think 204.97 for Sophie Ben, still the fastest so far, so not much in it. It's heat five come through of these eight heats. The last heat prior to those seeded heats that we're going to see some of the big names take place in these last three heats, but this is heat number five. Another lead swimmer. They've had some cracking swims so far. That's uh, in lane number two. That's Elizabeth Warner, a 13-year-old. Now, watch for the British junior record, the 13-year-olds. The age group record for the 13-year-olds is actually 203.6. It's a little bit, she's two seconds uh, outside that uh, on paper so far, so uh, it's a big ask. But we'll just keep an eye on that for you in lane number two because it'd be great to see an age group record go. She is in lane number two. She started fairly steadily down the first 50, sensibly up there in the yellow hat. Three lanes from the, from the top there. Lane zero, Sky Carter of Basildon possibly gone off fastest as she first had turned. She, she is in lane zero. Carter first, second Grover, third was Guilford, Maisie Guilford of uh, University of Bath in lane number six. Steady down this first 100, because when you get towards the 100 metre turn, that's when the big guys go, the big guys and guys, it's just pacing so important. And sprint to a freestyle, well, sprint to freestyle freestyle's almost become a sprint now. It used to be sort of a middle distance event, didn't it? The twos and fours. If you don't have the speed now, you're in serious trouble. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking that there's a lot of, uh, when we were doing the 400, you used to see a lot of 200 and 400 swimmers double up, the likes of James Guy and people like that, they used to swim up 204, but it's now, it's the 100 and 200 seems to be the double that the, the top guys are doing, and it's just gone that way in the, the women as well, so you really have to be fast out, and it is close contest here as they come to this last turn. Four swimmers still in it. Guilford is the one. 131.85. We're on for another good time, Andy. I think they're going to have another time, maybe in the 204 range, possibly, if she can come back strongly. 33 point for that previous 50. And we are going to be on for somewhere around about 204, maybe just sneaking into the 205. Well, it'd be great to see she's finishing very well indeed. This is a great discipline inside this last. 25 metres from Maisie Guilford of Bath University, which is going to go 2.037. 31.9 to finish with. Well, that's very good indeed. Slightly faster finisher as well as Murray Craig of Edinburgh University, finishing at 31.7. But those two swimmers, well, again, more lifetime bests. Maisie Guilford's lifetime best, 2.051, and she's gone 2.037. Guilford wins it, new lifetime best for her by what, one and a half seconds. Craig second, Robinson third, Farrow fourth with Sky Carter and fifth. Wow. Well, it's getting quick, and that's the last of the unseeded heat, so it, we don't even have the fastest 30 swimmers in the pool yet. 2.037. Here are the swimmers in heat six of eight, the first of the seeded heats, and Lucy Hope goes in lane number four with Mia Slevin in five and Erin Little in six. Sub two minutes, and you've got a cracking chance of making the final here, the big final, the A final. I'm sure that's what uh, many of these swimmers will be targeting as close to two minutes as possible for those who are a little bit slower and well under for swimmers like Lucy Hope. So heat six, three heats to go in this women's 200 metres freestyle. And now we've got the seeded heats. Third seed into this women's 200 freestyle is Lucy Hope in four. Of course, was on that uh, world championship silver medal winning women's 4 by 200 metres freestyle relay in Doha in February. 
she's gone out fairly comfortably down this uh, first 50 meters turning about second or third maybe second is Lucy Hope 27-7 from Erin Little of Mount Kelly well she's gone off very fast in the white hat just on the right hand side of your shot there expect Lucy Hope to come back uh, quite hard, hard on the second half of this but um, Little's gone out quite quickly here this is interesting yeah very good start there from Erin Little and Lucy Hope just kind of she said and they just gone out a little bit more conservatively but just putting on the pressure now Lucy Hope she's been a fixture in the GB team a fixture in that relay set up for a few years now Lucy Hope trying to make it to the Olympic Games of course and that four by two relay team is really picking up for the women isn't it we've seen the men that have kind of dominated have been right at the top of the rankings for a few years now but the women coming through and they've got a strong squad well, they really do, and the focus that uh, Aquatics GB has had on the relays has really paid dividends, particularly that men's 4x2, as you said, Paul. I mean, it's just, uh, it's made not only that relay brilliant, but the individual swimmers, everyone's clamouring to get on that because it's such a great opportunity for Olympic gold. And uh, here, well, our world championship silver medalist on that women's 4x2, Lucy Hope, looking very good. Maybe just starting to uh, take second place now is Jemima Hall of Bath University in three. And let's just look at the time also of Erin uh, Little in five. She could go a junior consideration time here. I don't think she's just done it, you know. I really do think she has. We'll just check the times here. 158.9 for the winner. Lucy Hope, that's good. It's only just over a second outside of her lifetime best, and it's a good, solid heat swim. All she needed to do, she wins the first of the heat seeded heats, heat six. Hope wins it. Second was uh, Jemima Hall, two minutes point seven. So I think she'll make it through. And Erin Little's actually given herself a chance of making it through to the big final. But that in coming in third for Erin Little of Mount Kelly to a 105. Is it? Oh, she's just outside the juniors. Actually, excuse me. I was thinking she was a junior, but she's just outside the juniors now. Born in 2005, when 2006, 7, 8, 9, and 10 birth dates uh, makes it. But well, good swim from her. Nevertheless, so hope fastest so far with 158. Here's heat seven, and Abby Wood, another of that uh, team, silver medaling team of the World Championships, in lane number four, second fastest seed coming into these championships from Loughborough Performance. Dave Hemming is her coach, ranked number two, just missed Olympic medals in 200 medley and 200 breaststroke. Great swimmer in four. Brilliant underwater. Watch her start here in four. Well, she didn't let us down, did she? She got to 15 metres first. Only allowed 15 metres underwater, and she used about uh, 14 and a half metres of that 15. A really good start from Wood. Also a good start from Kate Clifton in three from City of Sheffield, and uh, Jessica Podger of Millfield in five with uh, Phoebe Cooper of Sheffield in six. Abby Wood, I watched her in Edinburgh a couple of months ago. She was in great form and she built up for these trials. And again, another one who's hoping to try and make that qualification time in her own right. Her lifetime best is 157.31. That uh, nomination time just under the 157. And again, the relay options are there for these 200 freestyle swimmers. Abby Wood just getting the to the wall first but Georgina Pryor going well from Derby right there in contention 58-02 at the halfway point Clifton still there in the 58 second mark and also Megan Barnes in fourth position but Abby Wood looking good very experienced campaigner now trying to go to another Olympics trying to dip into those medal positions Andy of course fourth place at the Olympics the worst place to finish isn't it it's not a great one. I don't like ninth either, to be honest. <laughs> ninth is a tough one because you don't like the final. At least fourth is in the final, but it is tough, particularly if it's hundreds, and it was hundreds that she uh, just missed out on a, a medal at the Olympic Games. But um, it's, uh, it's a good heat here. She looked very, very comfortable indeed. Really comfortable on that first 100 metres, and Abby Woods really picked the pace up here 
Abby Woods, the fastest seed in this second 100 metres, my word. But if she goes under two minutes here, she's going to go well under. It's a way to swim it, 158.4. Well, it's only 1.2 outside of her best, and the way she swam that, so easy to the 100, and then really, really took on that second 100 metres. But fascinating tactics. A second swimmer now under two minutes, 158.4. That's Abby Wood. Lucy hoping that previous heat went really well. She was a 158 as well. So two swimmers under two minutes with the final heat still to go. Wood wins the second last heat. Holly Hibbert second. Megan Barnes third. Clifton fourth. Hibbert's got a decent chance of making the final with that as well. Two minutes point. Yeah, it's going to be somewhere around the two minute mark, isn't it? Maybe dipping into the 201s, possibly, to make this final. Still some fast swimmers to come. Four swimmers, just entry times on the two-minute mark as well. That's true, Paul, but I, I've got to tell you that this heat is absolutely stacked. Holly Widows in one, Candice Hall in two, Leah Schlossen in three, Freya Colbert and uh, Mehdi Harris in four and five. There is Hedda Harris. Harris winning a silver on that relay as well with Freya Colbert in four and five. Colbert, of course, world champion, 400 medley in four. And uh, Evelyn Davis in six. This is a really stacked heat. It is the final heat of the women's 200 metres freestyle. It's a big one. The fastest uh, women in Great Britain in the centre lane is uh, Freya Harris. 1.56.1 is her entry time. I just say that uh, Freya Anderson actually not competing here in this race in this 200 meters freestyle she's she's unfortunately suffered with a little bit of a little bit of glandular fever so um she's decided not to swim here may swim the 100 meter later in the uh, meet but we'll have to see but here freya colbert has gone out well with uh, Mehdi harris what a year these two have had world champion 400 medley and silver on the relay the 4x2 free relay at the world championships freya colbert in four in five, Betty Harris, silver medal on that relay, and also European short course champion, 200 metres freestyle. And these two looking very good. The white hat in the centre, Freya Colbert in four, and Mehdi Harris, the black hat in five, with Schlossen also going well, City leads in three. And tactically, very good indeed. This is, uh, this is impressive stuff. Well, yeah, they can't hang about in this heat. We've seen the times from the previous heats. They're going to have to be close to that two minute mark just to make sure of that place in the final so a couple of swimmers already under the two minute mark and we have a couple on the two minute mark and a few on 201 as well but these leading three going really well Leah Slosson, Freya Kilver and Mehdi Harris the big names in the center looking like they are good for that top eight but can anyone pull back here on them also going well Evelyn Davis down in lane number six but Freya Colbert in the centre, now showing her power in the closing stages. So it is Colbert, Harris, Davis. Colbert leading in four. Maybe just about Mehdi Harris in five. Excuse, excuse me, it's actually Schlossen in three as well. So Colbert wins it, Harris second. Schlossen, I think, just gets third. 159.6, a little bit more comfortable for the winners the first two there only two sub per two minutes 159.6 and 159.9 Schlossen third two minutes point three I think she'll get through to the final with that I think she'll be somewhere around seventh or so I think so, yeah, she, she was just stretching trying to uh, strain her eyes for that one Andy well she certainly was to see the scoreboard at the other end of the pool but Colbert wins it Harris second and Colbert uh, wins it well she's going to go in third fastest into that final Schlossen's in there and two minutes one has made it through so uh, Schlossen has made it that's good so Abby Wood goes in fastest hope second that's going to be a great final it really is and that women's four by two free relay the focus on that for Great Britain certainly the Olympics is going to be very very exciting indeed Some great swims all the way through. 204 is there for the junior swimmers. Fantastic performances that we saw in those early heats. But it's a long way away, that scoreboard. I didn't know if it was just my age and my bad eyesight, but it's it's behind, it's 50 metres plus away, and it's very small graphics. 
Oh, I don't know what to tell you on that one, but it uh, might, might be your agent in the eyesight. Anyway, let's talk about agent eyesight. Perfect for John Mason in the studio. Yes, thank you very much, Andy. Uh, down here poolside, finishing up uh, uh, that uh, heats with the, the 200 free. Freya, great strong swim for you this morning, but of course, just dusting off the cobwebs on day one. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm really looking forward to tonight, and it was just about getting the job done, qualifying one of those centerlings and getting ready for a good race with the girls tonight. I mean, because that's a big one, right? Because it's not just the individual. We're trying to qualify those relay spots. So uh, it's all to play for this evening. Yeah, I mean, for me personally, I won't um, race the 200 free in Paris, even if I had the chance, because hopefully I qualify for the 400 IM and they're on the same day. So this event for me is really just all about the relay and really about qualifying the girls as fast as we can. Oh, fantastic stuff. Well, look, I can't wait to see you swim that 4 IM as well. World champion, look, good luck tonight. Get off swim down. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Freya Colbert. We'll see you tonight. Uh, that was, of course, uh, the women's 200 free. We're sticking with that, but we're moving over to the multi-classification discipline for the Paris swimming event. So it's back to the boys in commentary and back to the action. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we have the two heats of the women's multi-classification 200 freestyle. Well, we have seen a number of swimmers this morning in the previous multi-class event. This is probably one of the first chances that we're going to have to see a nomination time being achieved by some of the swimmers in these two heats. They line up for that first heat now. Susanna Hext in lane number three. Tully Kearney in four. And Eliza Humphrey goes in lane number five. So two swimmers in the S5 classifications. This is a Paralympic event for them. And they are looking for a nomination time of 3.05.57. They are definitely capable of achieving that. Tully Kearney in the water is the world record holder in this 200 metres freestyle for the S5 classification. They're joined by Eliza Humphrey. Oh, swimmers with a visual impairment. Eliza Humphrey, an S11 swimmer. She has uh, no vision at all. She's wearing the blacked out goggles. You see the tappers at the end of the lanes to tell her where the turns and the finish are. And Eliza Humphrey stretching away from the two S5s. You expect the top point centers to be Tully Kearney and Susanna Hicks, but Eliza Humphrey will be uh, targeting the, the British record held by her sister Scarlett. Here's the tappers now as they come into the turn. Discipline of tapping has kind of changed over the years. It always used to be quite a short tapping stick on the head almost when I first started. It's kind of developed. There's all sorts of different techniques for the tappers these days. What I'm slightly disappointed, I thought it was called a bonker. Because <laughs> they got bonked on the head, but uh, I'm... Oh, you, you, could, you could go that way. You could go I don't think it's optional. I, just, I was just wondering if it was actually called... I swear I thought, I know, this, uh, dead straight up, I thought it was called I thought it was called a bonker. There's the lady on the seat on the end of the pool with the uh, with the stick with the little ball on the end. But she's you're right, she's not bonking her on the head, is she? It's on her back. On the back for the freestyle seems to be the way that it's uh, going these days. You know, just to kind right. of avoid. Well, it's just the, I suppose the techniques. It's for each swimmer. Some people still get uh, bonked on the head, but it's almost what you train to do. So if you get hit on the back, you know exactly where you are, and you get maybe two strokes into the wall. It's the head, maybe a little bit closer into the wall, doesn't give you enough time to set your stroke and do your tumble turn. But this isn't a Paralympic event for Eliza Humphrey. Uh, British records held by her sister, 237.42. It is a qualifying event, though, for the likes of Tully Kearney and Susanna Hicks. So the world record holder for the S5 class is Tully Kearney. I'll keep an eye on her, 201.77 for Tully. She has got a great record in this event, Tully Kearney, silver medalist in the Paralympic Games. She did the freestyle treble at the World Championships in 2022, the 50, the 100 and the 200. But we'll keep an eye on Eliza Humphrey first. She will be first to the ball, 237.42 for Eliza, it's a British record. And she comes into the wall, 237.42. It's just going to slip by, I think, not by much. Oh, very close indeed for Eliza, 238.54. Are we going to get our first nomination time here for Tully Kearney? And we are. Tully Kearney into the wall, 245.56. First nomination time that we have seen. 
just outside the world record mark. And is Susanna Hex going to do the same? Yes, she is. 2.57.35 for Susanna Hex. So two nomination times achieved by the two GB swimmers. Susanna Hex, the winner of the gold medal at the World Champs last year in the 50 freestyle. She's got the nomination time in the bag early. So the two S5s, two of the world's very best S5s have claimed those nomination times, the first ones that we have seen, so it's great to see. Just waiting for the result to be confirmed. We have the blacked out goggles, of course, of Eliza Humphrey to be checked, so until they are done, we can't make it an official result, but there is the world record holder, Charlie Kearney. Points system based on unceremoniously exit. <laughs> from the pool from Tully, Tully Kearney, but it's effective. And she will be delighted to claim that nomination time, the first we've seen for the GB Para swimmers. So the black duck goggles look like it has been sorted. There we go, and there are the points. Tully Kearney in excess of a thousand points. I did say the world record standard was roughly a thousand points. This uh, the standard for Tully Kearney 242 is the world record, so that 1,020 points, just in excess of that 1,000 point mark, but just outside the world record, not too much in it at all. So great swims there, Susanna Hex and Tully Kearney claiming those two nomination times, and I think we might be in for more here. Here's the lineup for the second heat. Megan Neve up there in line zero, Grace Robinson in one, Sienna Oxby in two, Amber Haycock in three, Georgia Sheffield in four, Olivia Newman Baronius in five, Potty Maskell in six, Louise Finnis in seven, and Jessica Jane Applegate goes in lane number eight. Most of the swimmers here in the S14 classification, uh, swimmers with an intellectual impairment, first time we've seen the S14s here at these championships, but dominate this particular heat of this 200 freestyle. Amber Heath got the only non S14 swimmer. She goes in lane number three. Just four lanes down from the top. Amber Heath got, she's an S10 swimmer, but Poppy Maskell out first. And Olivia Newman Baronius, what a swim that she had in the Italian Para World Series. She won four gold medals out there in Italy, and she's going to be a new star for the GB team. And someone there closest to us, Jessica Jane Applegate. Well, she's done it all before. She's the world champion from last year, and she won the Paralympic gold in this very event right here in London in 2012. Applegate in fourth place at the minute, Louise Finnis. The three, the four S14s. I think we might be able to get four S14s under the nomination standards here. Moves for this being caught by Poppy Masco. These two have had some great head-to-heads. Olivia Newman Baronius just down against uh, Masco and Fidis with Applegate coming through in the third place here. Nomination time 210.49. I think we could be on for this now. Maskell now hits the front, Louise Finnis. They're all in the same classification. Doesn't really matter about the points here for the leading four swimmers. It's all about the positions, and Potty Maskell looking really good here in lane number six. Potty Maskell, 2.10.49, and she looks like she is going to challenge that one. Going to be well on inside the 2.10.49. Potty Maskell, another swimmer inside. That nomination standard, 2841. Applegate just gets in ahead of Luis Finnis for second and third. And they are just outside that nomination time with Newman Baronius in third place. Well, Potty Masco, what a last 50 she had there. And that is another swimmer inside those nomination times. 3187 for the last 50. Well, that is impressive stuff for Potty Masco. She was the emerging Paris Swimmer of the Year 2022. She's come onto the senior team. 
from the GB team. And she has impressed us there. Well, you've got to wonder with a last split like that, she can go much faster if she uh, pushes it a little bit earlier. Yeah, 894 points for Puffy Maskell with more in the tank, we think. She didn't get to swim the 200 at the World Championships last year. It looks like she might be swimming in the, in the Paralympic Games if that nomination is confirmed. Tully Kearney will lead the way, though, with that uh, score, point score of over 1,000 points. Puffy Maskell in second place. Let me go down to... Megan Neve, who also makes it into the qualification for the final, of course. A uh, couple of swimmers not able to compete in that final because of their non-confirmed classification. Now we go on to the next event. Well, this is one of the races that everybody has been looking forward to. It is the men's 100 metres breaststroke and in the final heat, the seventh heat, we have the great Adam Peaty. 14 world records he's set. He holds three Olympic gold medals, two in this 100 meters breaststroke. He won in Rio in 2016, he won in Tokyo in 2021. The triple has never been done in the same 100 meters breaststroke in three consecutive Olympic Games. It's never been done. He goes in seven. This is heat one. 64 swimmers in this men's 100 meters breaststroke. The first of seven heats, and Charles Simpson, great butterfly swimmer too, from Plymouth, he goes in lane number four, the fastest seat, Noah Wheeler in five. Adam Bradley, closest to us in the red hat of City of Liverpool in six, with Sam Williamson of Bath in lane number three. And these four guys were very, very similar, very close indeed, hardly anything splitting them. Right at the top there, maybe Sam Williamson just first to turn. And, whoa, very tight indeed, goodness me, well, their entry times were really close. They're just, what, uh, 0.07 of a second, 7.100 split their entry times, and it looks like it's going to be very similar here as well. Closest to us is uh, Bradley of Sydney Liverpool, Wheeler, one up from him in the black hat of uh, Chelfont Otters, Simpson of Plymouth in the white hat in the centre coming through, maybe to take the touch, I think he does, yes he does. Charles Simpson, 104.35 on a 105.8 entry time. One and a half seconds again under the lifetime best to win. This the first heat of the men's 100 metres breaststroke. Sam Williamson swam very well indeed for fourth. Four swimmers under 105. The entry times all 105.8s and 105.9s. Look at that. 105.8 and 105.9 was the uh, was the seed times. Just have a confirmation of the result there. Here it is. So with seed times of 105.8s and 9s, they've all gone 104s and 105 low. Look at that. PBs all round. Well done. Massive PBs. Well done. All four. Heat two. Men's 100 metres breaststroke. Joseph Ashley of City of Liverpool just watched his teammate do a huge lifetime best in that first heat. What can he do right in the centre? That red hat of City of Liverpool in lane number four, fastest seed. Heat two of seven heats of the men's 100 breaststroke. There's four juniors in this second heat of the men's 100 metres breaststroke, and the, or the consideration time for the European juniors can be done in these heats and these guys not seeded that far away you know certainly right in the center joseph ashley of city of liverpool in the red hat well he's not started that fast down the first 50. decent first uh, 25 first 30 or so possibly the fastest start is uh, sam cornish of enfield in lane number five yeah galker is the one who gets to the wall first in that outside lane right there at the top but coming back now in lane number five going well sam cornish again we saw big improvements there in the first heat to get big improvements here we could be close to that european junior time for the juniors but just over the the 104 mark but we're all closing up now in the closing stages into the last 10 meters here 
Well, it's mighty close. Look at this. Right at the top there may be Gallagher of Taunton Dean. Does he get the touch? He does. 104.77. Full second inside his lifetime best to win. The second heat of the men's 100 metres breaststroke. Has he seen it yet? Oh. Nice. Good swim. Solid. Very solid. In fact, it was excellent. And mine's solid. 64-7 off first, 65-7 lifetime best. Regan Gallagher wins the second heat of the men's 100 metres breaststroke. Jamie Stedman second from Clevedon. Toombs third. El Ghaziri fourth. Ashley fifth. Well, it's fast. It's very fast. And all these guys would have warmed up with the great Adam Peaty. What an opportunity for them. Here's heat three. We really are rattling through these. And again, some more very fast juniors in this, the third heat of the men's 100 metres breaststroke. Juniors in five and six. It's Daniel Ransom and Alexander Corver. Also in eight and nine, William Tonks and Radu of Plymouth. Fastest seed in four, Robert Bryce of Aberdeen. Third heat of the men's 100 metres breaststroke with PT in seven, heat seven. This the third heat, and all of these guys, they warmed up with PT. They've been in the ready room watching him. Watch how the greatest breaststroker in history prepares for a heat of an Olympic trial, the Aquatics GB Swimming Championships for 2024. Yeah, certainly the magic of Adam Peachy certainly rubbing off on the swimmers in these early heats as well. Very tight contest as they go to the start, to the, the turn, sorry, Ronnie Hallett from Plymouth Leander. Just has the edge, but they're everyone all in a row here. Again, entry time here for Ronnie Hallett, 105.17. But they are coming back. It's the yellow caps again in the middle, who might just be getting back on terms here, but I think Hallett might just be holding on. Well, Hallett's actually swimming away at the moment. That silver bullet hat right up there in uh, he's in lane, uh, lane two, I think he is. Yes, he is, Ronnie Hallett of Plymouth. Really good swim, 104.3 wins it. His entry time, 105, won his lifetime best. So another eight tenths underneath his lifetime best. Represents Guernsey at the Commonwealth Games in 2022. And Hallett attacked it well. Really good second 50. Hallett won it. Second was Sir Daniel Ransom, a 16-year-old. And Ransom's lifetime best was 64.9, and he's just gone 64.6, so another three-tenths under his best. Hallett, Ransom, Godsell, Bryce, Corver. Really good swimming. The last of the unseeded heats, and then we get the big boys, the fastest 30 swimmers in Great Britain in five heats, five, six, and seven. This is heat four, the last of the unseeded. And Elijah Kendrick of Swansea University goes in lane number four with Maxwell Anderson of City of Cardiff in five, John Britton of Ealing in six. Vadim Bosk of Mount Kelly in three. So I don't forget this uh, junior finals available for the junior swimmers as well as the B final, as well as the big Paris A final at these uh, championships. And right in the center, well, the fastest two swimmers started off well, but maybe closest to us in uh, lane eight is uh, Ollie Tavener of Loughborough University. I think ex of uh, Mount Kelly, but he started off well, and he's gone off really fast as Tavener. Look at this, Paul, it's really quick down the first 50. It absolutely is, under the 29th second mark, he's got a 0.8 of a second advantage over all the rest of the field. Ben Harrison from Loughborough, his Loughborough teammate. Of course, uh, oh, they, they'll have the opportunity to train with the likes of Adam Beatty on a daily basis, and it, they're really going well in the early stages. Is he going to be caught, though? There's a 25-metre mark, the 15-metre marker into the last 15, now. Well, the charge really is on here in this heat four of seven, very close indeed. Goodness me, thank goodness for electronic timing. Look at that, oh my word. Ben Harrison wins it, 103.92, our first summer sub uh, 64 seconds. Harrison up there in lane number two for Loughborough University, wins heat four of the men's 100 metres breaststroke. Great swim from him, second 
is uh, Josh Mitchell of Edinburgh, third, Maxwell Anderson, the 19-year-old. So Ben Harrison wins it 63-9. His entry time 64-5, so another over half a second inside a lifetime best. It's great to see Aquatics GB prepared the pool, prepared the venue, prepared the event so well. Fantastic television coverage here for this meet. Best ever. And the swimmers really are swimming quickly on this, the first morning. It's a six-day meet. This is the first morning, and it looks great so far. And now we have the big boys starting to come through, the fastest 30 swimmers in Great Britain. And there is Greg Butler right in the centre in that GB hat in lane number four. Training partner, teammates of Adam PT, coached by Mel Marshall, the same coach, of course, right in the centre. Decent start he's had. That black hat with the Union Jack on it, Greg Butler. His lifetime best, 60.03. Three one hundreds outside of getting to that 60-second barrier. Can he do that here? Not sure he's going to have a crack at it in the heat, but certainly in the final. Let's hope he gets dragged through to sub-60. Now, I'll just check the split here as he goes through that 28.06 giving himself a little bit of a chance here to get under that 60, Greg Butler. And second place, well, it looks like it is Mahindra Kuma in lane number five, but, well, what a dominant swim here. Butler going really well in the centre. That's fantastic swim. He could do it here. I said he wasn't sure he was going to have a crack at 60, but he's definitely trying. He's really pushing it. If he can hold on to his stroke down this last five metres now. Greg Butler of Loughborough University, Loughborough Performance. What's his time? 60.29. 29 one hundredths of a second outside of that 60 second barrier again but great practice for this evening he'll certainly make it through to the big final tonight with that and he'll have a good lane as well and that's a super swim the swimmer next to him just asking him Oscar Bilbao he can't see the scoreboard it is you're right Paul you've said it a few times it's so far away it's not just you and your your old eyes there Paul it's some of the swimmers too <laughs> it is it must be about what, 70, 80 metres away? And it's yeah, quite it's a tiny rating. <laughs> anyway, Greg Butler's super swim. It really was. 60.29 wins the first of the seeded heats. A really great swim from him. Mahindra Kumar second. So, second last heat, James Wilby. European champion in Rome on the 200 metres breaststroke from an outside lane. There he is. Such a stalwart of British swimming for so long. I've got to say, almost unlucky to have been around with uh, Adam Peaty being so fast, but he's done his fair share of winning gold medals at major championships, as, uh, as will be in the centre there in the black hat. He really has. Commonwealth champion in this 100 metres breaststroke. And will be looking really good down this first 25. Doesn't have the best start, will be. Actually, interestingly, neither does Sir Petey. Will be normally winds into the 100 metres, and uh, the two guys in the centre now will be in four, starting to uh, to stretch it out a little bit. Rory Dixon of uh, University of Stirling in five, but no doubt about uh, the leader. 28.5 is will be at the halfway. Yeah, it's uh, slightly slower than we saw in the previous heat. But as you said, Andy will be very, very strong in the uh, closing stages of this 100 breaststroke using that 200 technique that he has. Rory Dixon's been on good form. He's right on the shoulder of Wilby, but Wilby looks like he's got this one sewn up. So we'll be looking for probably a 60 point, something like that. Is he going to get close to sub 60? 60.3. 60 good swim back in 31.8. So using that second 50 speed pretty well. Looked a comfortable swim for him. Didn't look like he was trying to uh, knock the lights out. No fireworks going off in that heat, but uh, I think if he can get close to that well, consideration time, he's got to go under if he can. He's got to really finish first or second and go 59.45 or faster in the final. 59.45 is the target, 60.38 in the heat. He can't set it in the heat, so didn't need to go Super quick. Dixon could swim from him in second. Smith third, Riley fourth. 
So the final heat and the first opportunity for many British swimmers to see in the flesh and there's lots of them here and there's going to be an awful lot of packed final session tonight. There are some tickets still to come. PT's in lane four, the world record holder in this men's 100 metres breaststroke, the greatest breaststroker in history. Adam PT in four and five is Archie Goodburn. And three, Elliot Woodburn. But PT, three Olympic gold medals. Can he do three in a row? He won in Rio, Olympic gold. He won in Tokyo, Olympic gold. Can he do it again in Paris? He's got a job to do yet, though. He's got to make the team. Final heat, men's 100 breaststroke. PT in four. So Adam Peaty, world record holder right in the centre. He's had a decent start. Also a good start there is Elliot Woodburn of Millfield in three with a green hat. But there is Peaty. And but he took a full year out. Got a little bit of burnout, I think. Uh, took a little bit of time out, get his mental health back on track. And to come back after a full year, not easy, but he's managed to do it. Bronze medal at the World Championships. That was a great step forward, a really good, a really important step, that one. Yeah, a very good first 50 from PT. What we've come to expect, 27.09 for him. Good burn right there as well, but no doubt about this one. PT is going to make sure that he claims a pace in the final. It's going to be a quick time as well. Well, he doesn't have to go this fast. He looks a little bit jerky, stroke not quite there. I'm sure his coach Mel Marshall will have a look at that for the final, but he does look good though, doesn't he? He's swimming, it's a fast time. It's a really fast time. Well, he didn't need to go quick, but that is very, very fast indeed. I've got to say that's a massive surprise. It really is. Three-time Olympic champion, twice in this event, the 100 meters breaststroke, also won that mixed medley relay. He's split there the fast into history by miles. He's just gone 58.5 for a heat of 100 breaststroke. You know, I'm not sure he swam that fast in a heat ever. I think even at the Olympic Games, I'm not sure he's gone that quick. Very fast indeed. That is impressive, that really is. He, he was out extremely fast on that first 50 there. Wow, what a fantastic swim there from Adam Peaty. What we've come to expect from him, I mean, he is back with a vengeance, Andy. Well, I wish I had the times that were swam at the World Championships in front of me. I think that's faster than he went to win the bronze medal at the World Championships in February, you know. Very impressive. Really was an age group record there for uh, Philip Novaki in lane number three for the Jersey Tigers. But uh, goodness me, 58.5. And you know what? He didn't look, can I say, I'm allowed to say this? He didn't look that great and he's gone 55. When he gets that, uh, he's a little bit, a little bit jerky for me. You know, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Mel will have a look at that and you know, she'll probably go Andy, get back in your box. What a swim that was. Well, hopefully I'll have a quick chat with uh, with John Mason because I'm really looking forward to uh, to hearing about that. Goodness me. So the final heat of the men's breaststroke. Well, we didn't see the uh, the finest there, unfortunately, but um, there we go. So PT, 58.53, a fantastic swim from him. But look, they're all queued up behind him. 60.2, 60.3, 60.4. Who's going to get that second slot? Really important, because I would imagine we will take a second breaststroker for that uh, medley relay and the mixed medley relay potentially as well. So really important to get a slot there. Goodness me, I, still can't, I can't get over that 58.5. I think that I think the world breaststroke swimming are going to look at that and go, oh my word, I didn't expect him to go that quick in a heat at the trials. I really don't think that was expected. So just uh, going through the uh, the full list of finishes in this men's 100 metres breaststroke. There was, was there 64 of them? Yes, there were. So let's hear what Adam pc has got to say. He's with John Mason. Well, I tell you what, a fantastic way to uh, finish up the final heat of that. Adam, of course, hitting that nomination time. It's got to be done in tonight's final, but that's uh, got to give you a bit of confidence, setting you up to replicate that this evening. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's come a long way, you know. That's my Honestly, easiest swim I've done in a very long time. I think it's my, because my moustache is gone, but <laughs> I think, um, you know, 
gives me a lot of hope for tonight. Uh, still made a few errors there. But you know, you know, you're going to when you're in taper for the first time in a long time when the stroke feels different. But we've got a very good platform for this evening. And you know, I've been watching you swim over the last year and you've just gradually been getting better and better. And it seems to me out there, you, your speed was looking good. Is that something you've been working on? Speed is almost too good. <laughs> I'm just getting used to it. I'm trying not to be in an arrogant way. It's, you know, trying to get a bit of humility in there, but we need that confidence in there. And the speed feels really good. Now it's just going to be about matching it with the emotion, which is my strength. Everyone knows I'm an emotional person, an emotional swimmer, an athlete. And uh, once that emotion shows tonight, I'm going to show that, you know, this, I haven't enjoyed this since, oh, I can't even remember the last time I enjoyed British Champs. Let's be truthful. And uh, yeah, this is the first time where I'm like, you know what, this is my home, this is where I belong. And, you know, I want to make that Olympic team. Yeah, well, look, we can't wait to see you do it. Go replicate that evening. You were looking good. Congrats. Oh, you head off the swim down and hopefully we'll be chatting later. Ladies and gentlemen, Adam Peaty. Wow, what a fantastic race that's going to be. But of course, we've still got one event. A couple of little technical issues we're going through here, ladies and gentlemen. And then we're going to be back with our final event, which is the men's multi-class uh, para swimming 100 meter breaststroke. So it's back over to the boys in commentary, and we'll see you in a bit. Wow, John, wow indeed. That was amazing, really fantastic swim. And uh, Adam Peaty's actually just uh, walking past us right now. And uh, he's waving to the crowd. 58.5 and he did say he made a couple of little mistakes there i'm pleased he said that because I was, <laughs> and you were I was in trouble to stress a tiny bit but he just you know he looks happier he looks more relaxed they're just uh oh look at this they're just testing his blood so they'll take a little bit of uh a little bit of blood off his ear they'll just prick his ear take a little bit of that they'll take it away and just test it for his lactate to just check where it is and how he's doing very important sports science here they're right on top of stuff here and uh Team PT, they really are looking after him very well, his coach uh, Mel Marshall. But great to see Paul, his attitude is so much more relaxed. I mean, he, he was prowling around, he's got those lions on his arm, but he was prowling around before in previous meets. Here he just looks so much happier. Oh yeah, the relaxed is the word for it, I think. He just looked superb there leading up to that race and afterwards that interview was fantastic, wasn't it? We haven't seen that kind of Adam Beatty after a race for a very long time. Uh, so Adam Beatty still giving these uh, more interviews as well. He's got more to come tonight. 58.5 in the heat, Andy. What can we expect in the final? Well, you know, I, I actually I don't know what we're going to expect because I didn't expect that. I expected maybe 59 middle, 59 high. And well, he looks younger, doesn't he? He looks younger. He's got his nice little haircut, his little preppy. Boy, oh God, he's so strong though. What a superb swimmer. And you know, when someone like Michael Phelps was asked, how good this guy is, Michael Phelps said, he's the greatest swimmer in the world at the moment. That was back in uh, Rio Olympics. He said he's the greatest swimmer in the world. 56.8 for 100 breaststrokes still is just otherworldly. It's on another planet. But if he can get his head in the right place, it wasn't, which is why he's taken a year out and he's so brave to, Hold your hand up and say, you know what? I need to take some time out. I need to just chill. I need to get myself back on track. And of course, his team, his personal life is back on track as well. His, uh, you know, his family situation is, is really strong now. His coach, Mel Marshall, is strong. His training group is good. What can he do off that? But as a platform, I've got to say that's utterly brilliant. Just let you know, um, there's a little bit of hold up in the uh, in the meet at the moment because one of the lane lines has, has broken, so they're just fixing that. But, but Paul, you can only admire and almost be in awe of a, a heat swimmer, 58.5 for 100 oh, breaststroke. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, before, I remember seeing him when he came up to Scotland for a few meets. He used to love to come up to the Edinburgh International before, and when he was really at his peak, you know, in almost that kind of real time, when he was absolutely dominant. And he used to swim skins in Edinburgh and he used to go like 550s one after the other. And he just used to batter them out and he was absolutely dominant of this event. And that's kind of reminiscent to where he was at that time. He's back and back with a vengeance here. That's gonna send a message to the rest of the world, definitely. Well, it really will. And, to, and talking of that, and exactly that point, Paul, I've just looked up the world rankings for this year. And normally at this time of year, you wouldn't be too excited about it. But I've got to tell you, that time is the second fastest time. There he is, the second fastest time in the world this year. Now, he got a bronze medal at the World Championships. And that is, in fact, did he go? 
What time did he go? 50.54, I think he went, didn't he? So it's 5.3. 5.3. 58, 5.3. So in actual fact, it's the fastest time of the world this year. Well, that's incredible in the heat. Absolutely phenomenal. Very quick. Let's just look at this. Very quick round the wall. Much better underwater than he's been. But the power in this stroke. Now, right now, he, does it. he looks pretty good. He was starting to get a little bit jerky towards the end for me, but I'm sure Mel Marshall will have a quick look at that. But uh, his coach, but look at this. He's just tying up a little bit, but I'm not surprised at the speed he's gone. Phenomenal. Oh, phenomenal. It was good to watch, great to watch. And look at that, nod of the head. Yeah, job done. Wow. Wow. Breathe, please. <laughs> You know, I used to try and do that sometimes, pretend I'm not actually that tired. <laughs> yeah, the owies it. in your legs, I don't know what the technical term is, but the pain in your legs. Just to let you know that the lane t uh, eight to seven lane rope is broken, so they're moving the outside lane line just over one. There we go, look, they're, uh, they're trying to fix it. Well, are they trying to fix it or what are they trying to do? I'm not quite sure at the moment. There, there's a, there's a bit of a technical meeting, but I think they're moving the lane line, which is right on the outside of lane line at uh, lane nine and they're going to move that a whole lane over here we go move the lane over be careful now this is a little tricky i've done this several times before moving the lane lines and if the other guy on the other end pulls it too hard you're in <laughs> you've got to be very careful you've got to just wait pull it and then just wait for it to gently move over there you go don't pull it too hard it's very technical this ball as you know <laughs> I'm impressed. Every morning at Kelly College, I tell you yeah. what, we had to put the lane ropes out and then stick them back in again, and then we had a competition. We used to have them on a wheel at the end. We had to take oh, them yeah, out yeah. everything. I think they still do that, don't they? Oh, we had a time, time trial as to how quick you could take the lane ropes out, and I tell you what, Nigel <laughs> Goldsworthy, <laughs> talk, he was good. Talk about being competitive in oh, just about everything. Glenn Cook, Nigel Goldsworthy, I tell you what, we are, I was in there. You've got to feed it in as well, so it's because it's got to go... Olympic qualifying time for lane rope. Uh, I, you know what? I could, I'm not sure I could actually be in the team now, but I could certainly coach it because it's not only it's got to go on the wheel, but it's got to go in the right order. It's like putting a, a hose pipe on a long hose pipe back on yeah, the, you don't a, want a, to get a wheel. Kinked, do you? If you, you don't want to get it kinked, and you also, if you don't get it to go like across and then back beautifully, oh, it goes all over the oh, shot. That's it. Yeah. You've got to be careful. Paul, <laughs> come on. Right, okay. Technical. There we go, gentlemen. Good, good We're work. In. Well done. So there is now no lane line on the outside, uh, but there is. It's deck level, so all the waves will just go. Deck level meaning the water level is exactly the same level as the side of the pool. So any waves will just go straight into the little gutter there. So there's no issue at all with waves coming back in the pool. They are going to need these uh, full ten lanes for the second heat. We've got ten swimmers in the second heat, so they are going to have someone in the outside lane. So first heat. Uh, it's just got six swimmers in it in this men's multi-classification 100 meters breaststroke. Harvey Phillips will be back in again. He goes in lane number two. We've seen uh, another couple of swimmers that we've seen earlier on. But we will need the 10 lanes for the second heat. There is a rule in para swimming. If there is a visually impaired swimmer in the outside lane, they have to have a lane rope outside of them for obvious reasons. You don't want to crashing into the wall, especially the visually impaired guys. Didn't know that. That's a that's yeah. very sensible and absolutely is, appropriate, yeah. isn't it? You have it? to have a, a lane line at the end. For the other classes, it's not a, a requirement. Is that for all the visually impaired, the three visually impaired categories, or just the most uh, visually impaired? Yeah, certainly S11s. Um, sometimes if you are at a pool and they, they don't have a lane line in the outside lanes, because some, some don't have that very small lane on the outside. Then they have to move the S11s into an inside lane, change lanes. We've got an S11 in this one, though, and that's Archie here in lane number five. So thankfully, he's in the middle of the pool. The youngster, the 16-year-old. Harvey Phillips right at the top. We'll come back to Harvey. He's the SB3 classification. He's the... British record holder Harvey Phillips, saw him swim a good time earlier today. Should be some way behind the field aiming for his British record of 213. It's the lowest numerical classification. Owen Garsides is the highest numerical classification closest to us. He's in the SB14 class. Matthew Davis one lane down, Archie Hare. Lane number five going well in the middle. 
and Bruce D and Will Perry absolutely together there in the SB6 class. So British record holder Will Perry will watch out for him as the race progresses, as is Harvey Phillips in lane number two. But Owen Garside, that entry time of 118.00. He'll be trying to improve that. Two lanes up from him. Watch out for Archie here. It's a long-standing British record, which has stood since the year 2000, 124.80. So watch out for Archie here. Two lanes up from the leader at the moment. Going well, two lanes up from him is Bruce D as well. Owen Garside's will be first to the wall. And the point's 499. Here comes Archie here. He'll get tapped. He's an S11 swimmer. And the time, 125-31. Well, the record survives for another day. 125-31. But that time for Bruce D. Well, that could be a British record for him in his classification. 125.93 was the British record held by Will Perry, but I think it's 125.77 for Bruce D. So that is inside the British record for him. And now watch Harvey Phillips. So we're still to finish. He is the British record holder in his classification. The SB3 213.89. Let's hope Harvey gets some encouragement coming in to the end here. Is it going to be close? 2.13 for Harvey Phillips. And it is, oh, 2.14.77. He had a great swim earlier on in the IM. Just outside his old British record there in the 100 breaststroke. But there is the new British record holder, Bruce D. Taking that one from Will Perry. He's also in that race in lane number four. Archie here just missing out of the on that record time 125.31. We'll have to wait for the blacked out goggles of Archie here to be checked before the result is made official. But there, there's a young man, Andy Bruce D, really making strides here in para swimming. One to watch for the future. Might have a chance of getting a qualification standard later in the week. He's a good individual medley swimmer, and that good breaststroke is uh, auguring well for an individual medley swim later. Well, he certainly did look good, didn't he? He attacked it really well. I have to say, I still marvel at the swimmers who uh, blacked out goggles and they go dead straight. I mean, it's extraordinary what they do. Yeah, it's a great discipline from the SB11 swimmers. SB, of course, just means breaststroke. We have the S races as well, but Bruce D leads the way this Second heat is dominated by SB14 swimmers. We have SB events for the breaststroke. SM is medley. And the S prefix is for the other classifications. Just Matthew Redfern, the visually impaired swimmer in lane number one. One lane up from the top. The rest are SB14. A little bit of delay at the start here. Scott Quinn, Paralympic medalist in Rio. Paralympic medalist in Tokyo. Trying to make it to his third Paralympic Games. He is the British record holder. And there's Cameron Byrne Coombs. Had a great season. He goes in lane seven. Harry Stewart in lane nine was actually ahead of Scott Quinn at the World Series meet in Aberdeen a couple of months ago. The nomination time for the SB14s is 105.59. That's just outside Scott Quinn's British record, which he set back in 2019. But Harry Stewart's the man who's gone away fast here. It's going to be a real head to head between the S14s. Harry Stewart with a very fast start. We know that Scott Quinn is very fast in the second 50 of the 100, but Stewart has gone out. And it looks like a very good turn there from Harry Stewart, 30.12, taking him ahead of Scott Quinn. Cameron Vernkoom, close to Quinn here, but he is playing catch up, Scott Quinn to Harry Stewart. You can set the qualification time, of course, uh, nomination time for the para swimmers. Scott Quinn really trying to come back now. Harry Stewart, the nomination time is 105.59. Scott Quinn really closing up on Harry Stewart at the end of this one. 
It's going to be round about the 105 range for both of them. Stewart into the wall. 107 it was actually, not as fast as I thought it was going to be. 107.37 for Stewart and 107.77 for Scott Quinn. With Cameron Burnham just being pit by Reece Darby. Scott Quinn did come back in the second half of that one, but Stewart had the advantage at 808 points. We'll take him into the final in one of the top spots. So Harry Stewart, relatively newcomer to Parasport, leads the way in that second heat. Scott Quinn just behind in second and Reece Darby in third. As Harry Stewart will progress to the final, Scott Quinn will be there as well. They're in the top two spots. Bruce D from that first heat in second position. They will qualify. And you saw the top ten qualifiers there with the, the red cues against their name. And that is the final action for this first session. Well, what a first session. That's a heat session, 60 meet it is, this Aquatics GB Swimming Championships for 2024. The Olympic trial for the able-bodied and the paras, and also selection meet for the European juniors. So later on this evening, we will have, of course, the junior final, then the B final, the Paris para final, and then the big Paris A final for the able-bodied in each of the 400 free. It's a multi-classification, 50 metres butterfly, the 200 fly for women, where, of course, we got the uh, world champion. There's going to be some cracking races in there tonight. And, of course, women's 200 metres freestyle, utterly brilliant. But that final race tonight, can Adam Peaty again go the fastest time in the world on 100 metres breaststroke? Brilliant swim this morning. We'll see you at 6.45 for a 7 p.m. start for the first session of finals at the 2024 Aquatics GB Swimming Championships. It's goodbye from me, Andy Jameson. We know what it takes to achieve a dream. Dedication, courage, determination, control, desire. And our goal is to channel that energy. To champion the nation's best aquatic athletes support the teams who support them, inspire anyone and everyone to feel the benefits of a love of water and propel each sport onwards and upwards, or even downwards, by doing it the right way, sustainably, with integrity, with purpose. Because the thrill of seeing Great Britain being great at aquatic sport is something everyone can get excited about. We are Aquatics GB.